Welcome to the PSC Season Final in Monza. In this world, it's all about fine lines. The line between success and failure. First place and last. And with this riding on it, you've got to leave it all on the line. Welcome to the final race of Season 6, live on Twitch. day here and welcome along to the temple of speed in the outskirts of milan in monza and it is week number seven of the porsche tag Heuer esports all stars to start us off tonight arjuna and myself paul smith here um what an eventful time we're gonna have two championships to decide here today it's been a great season our shortest season today as well but it doesn't mean that we haven't managed to pack plenty of entertainment. And you saw a little bit of a glimpse for the weather that the All-Stars are expecting. While the Super Cup's going to be all dry and sunshine here at Monza, it's a little bit of rain and puddles to kick things off. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be damp. It's going to be slippy. It's going to be great to see how our All-Stars get on in that 911 GT3R, the GT3 machinery. Uh, for the final race, they've had the 963 GTP and the Cup car. But we finish off in GT3 machinery and it's going to be a real test of these drivers. 15 minutes for our sprint race. We invert the results of the sprint race for our grid for the main race. 25 minutes long and drivers right now are in qualifying so they'll be getting themselves set for qualifying. But Arjuna, we've got, it's called the Temple of Speed. It's very obvious to see why here. Yeah, we don't really need to use that oval anymore to carry high speeds with modern machines. And those chicanes, heavy braking zones, are such important factors when it comes to navigating successfully through races around here. Just 11 turns, but each of them unique in their own way. And while it's flat, there are bumps, and we'll talk about them plenty. Sprint race winner last time we came here, Casey Kerwin. Michael Conti able to grab the main race win, and I think that's important because as much as it's easy to make passes here, Paul, Casey wasn't able to carve his way from the back to the front, and I don't think we should expect that, whether it's dry or wet, when we get to the second of our two races today. And this is the first time that the All-Stars have had to face these types of conditions as well, so you're really going to see a real challenge for these All-Stars. You see Casey uh, just going a little bit offline, and, and what's interesting to me is he's using the paddle shifter, he's using a sequential shifter there on his rig, so he's it's going a little bit old school with the sequential box. And now, so there's, there's two potential reasons why, right? One, he thinks that in these conditions, he wants that little bit more grip that the round wheel provides, and it doesn't have shifters on it, so he needs to use a, a, a shifter off that wheel effectively, rather than a formula-style wheel, slightly smaller, quicker to move, but gives you a little less fine control. Or his regular wheels just broken. We'll bug him during the race to find out, because you know, we've got to make sure we slow him down however we can. Yeah. Matt Malone, though, look at him, struggling a little bit more in these conditions than I would have expected, down in 13. Yeah, he is. He's uh, sort of been uh, working his way at the wheel. And here is the Popo Lopez. Now, he is just 15 points behind Casey Kerwin in the championship coming into this race so uh, he wants to uh, get himself up there and, and well this the live points is including qualifying points here so that's down to 11 if it finishes as we stand in qualifying it's three points with uh full pole position here so it's important for the pole for lopez to, to make sure he gets what he can it's 25 points for a win 20 points for second 17 for third and then slowly from there, you start to trickle down to where 15 is the final points paying position. So we'll keep an eye on that championship fight. Not the only fight, of course. You've got Quirk uh, in third. Daniel Gray's had a quiet campaign, all things considered, but consistently he's been up there in the mix to be in the fourth. And uh, Sam Soid in fifth. I, go, I think it goes to show in some ways that uh, that mid-pack, Paul, it's been wild. It has been wild. It also shows that we've not had a, a repeat main race winner this season. Casey Kerwin's got one, Tyson Meyer's got one quirk, so Daniel Gray, who we saw last time out, to get a race win. Um, 
we've got a lot of people who have all had one main race win. It really shows how this All-Stars with that full inverted grid uh, really does sort of uh, turn things on its head. Yes, and uh, I like that with just 15 cars, I guess, here today, or 16 in total, it's going to be a little less dramatic down into turn one into the heavy braking zone, especially with these rain conditions and the spray that's going to cause plenty of consternation in these championship points. 20 drivers represented here. I'll be honest, Paul, I'm disappointed that after my effort, apparently I wasn't even good enough to get to the top 20. <laughs> Ah, well, yeah, you only did one round, we'll, we'll give you that. It's the race for sixth place as well that's really close, just four points separating four drivers, so that's going to be uh, uh, intriguing to watch that battle out there on track. But with that, qualifying is over. We're going to be heading ourselves over to the starting grid of the opening race of the evening. It's the first the sprint race of the Porsche Tank Car Esports All-Stars. And it's the Pope Lopez and Quirk on the front row. Casey Cohen and Emery on row number two. Love 46 and Daniel Gray, row number three. The fourth row for Kenny 500 and Basic Ollie. Dan Suzuki and Sam Soid share row number five. TK and Stratty on row number six. Grizzle and Matt Malone with Borgia Zaza. And Storm Molina round out your 16 car grid. Arjuna, I'm only going to hear that music one more time tonight. I'm, uh, yeah, it's such a good grid music. And gets you hyped for what's going to be an interesting start. Standing starts in these GT3Rs, not necessarily what they're usually designed for. So as they run their way down into turn one, going to be interesting who gets off the line well. And Paul, once that spray starts to kick in as well, let's see how they all go. As we go, green flag racing here at Monza. And you can see that spray coming up. And when you're behind the first couple of drivers, you cannot see that far ahead of you. As you go into the braking zone for the Retifilio for the first time, everybody behaving three wide further back as uh, they sort themselves out through that first chicane. We're going to spin her around. And it is Borja Zaza who's facing the wrong way but we stay clean at the front as we go through Curva Grande for the first time, heading towards the De La Rogia. Hit the brakes, but you gotta, you gotta be careful with this wet weather. You've got to take that wet line and brake offline or else you, uh, it's basically like an ice rink. Yeah, but what you'll see is as these drivers get more confident and comfortable with these conditions, they'll have to find themselves using some of these lines that are preferred for speed to hold off some of the challenges from behind. But in these early stages, just run very defensive, block off momentum from behind, and hope that in the spray, your drivers behind can't spot their references. It's very difficult to try and see your braking zones in your turn-in marks, Paul, when you're just blinded by the spray in front. That's a good downhill then under the old banking back uphill braking into the Ascari chicane and those curbs as well the curbs and white lines you've got to be so careful of in these conditions i found that out to my detriment uh, earlier this week when i was doing some official races but down the back straight we go towards the curve at alvaretto for the first time and it's still the Pulpa lopez ahead of quirk Nice bit of a gap at the front there, actually, between the two of them. Casey Kerwin, though, third place, looking at the back of the many faces of Quirk. It's a different type of all-star race, isn't it? In that I think this is going to be a little bit more about surviving the elements, especially in the sprint race. Not sure exactly what's going to end up happening when we move on to the main race, right? The, the weather system here on iRacing is going to evolve, and so it might end up meaning slightly different conditions that these drivers evolve in. This is what I'm talking about, though. Riding from the uh, roof camera, it's actually slightly better as the Pulpa Lopez has made a mistake up front. New race leader momentarily. No one else making a mistake, though. Oh, Quirk's got to slow down, though. I can tell you now. So he's dropped back. So maybe it was just Quirk getting a little bit too hot into the Retifilio. And that means that uh, it goes uh, down the order to fourth twice with that slowdown penalty. So at the front, it's the two championship leaders then. It's the, uh, the Pulpa Lopez who's in second place in the championship ahead of championship leader Casey Kerwin. And Casey, well, he's wanting to, uh, to get another title in the bag. 
Yes, but you also mentioned, right, the fight for six was quite close as well. Top five in this championship all receive a tag coil Porsche connected watch. So as much as the fight for sixth is fun, it would have been even more fun if the fight for fifth was intriguing as well, right? Because then there was something on the line for them all to be fighting for. Daniel Grace is comfortably in the top five right now as they run. And I think you, this is what I was mentioning when we were talking about the championship, is he's been consistent so far, having another solid day as he looks around the outside of Tony Kanaan. And joining us right now is Daniel Gray. So uh, whilst he's battling with Tony Kanaan and battling the spray, Daniel, I mean, how is it out there? You start in mid-pack. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it is so wet. I, uh, I got a bit of a horrible start. Tony managed to get past. Now it's just... Uh trying to get back past him, but uh, honestly, I, I really want the top five of the championship, because obviously uh, that's where the prizes start, so we'll see what happens. I'm really close. You're wanting to watch, that's what it is. You want to you get yourself a nice timepiece for this one, but just to explain to the viewers, though, just how tricky is it out there, these conditions right now, as we get a little bit of a bird's eye, a, a little look through your view. Yeah, honestly, like, on the straights, it's all about just trying to see and find some visibility, which is why I guess on the broadcast you'll see cars kind of zigzagging down the straight a little bit, especially getting close to braking zones. Um, but honestly, like, I, I actually didn't find Monza as difficult as I thought I would. Obviously, there's all the horror stories of Turn 1 and all that kind of stuff, but everyone's kept it uh, really nice and sensible, at least from what I've seen. Maybe the broadcast has seen something different, but uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love road racing. And, you know, just sum up your year as well in this uh, All-Stars as well. It's been great to have you along. You must have, uh, must have had a lot of fun this year. Yeah, no, honestly, it has been so much fun. Like, every year this happens, like, all I want is to be invited to race it, so I'm so happy I got to... Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I get invited back next year. <laughs> it's been awesome. Well, Daniel, we'll let you uh, go by and carry on with your race and uh, continue your battle with TK. Thank you so much, guys. So there we go, Arjuna, getting a little bit of an insight into what it's like to be racing out there in these conditions. It's, uh, it is tricky out there. Yeah, I'm just watching the lines that they're running as well. I'm really seeing, of course, with the rain still uh, pouring onto the circuit, where the puddles are building just yet. But I find it interesting how some drivers find it very important to go out and find the, the clean air down these straights. Others much more content to run in the spray and feel comfortable judging their references from the brake lights effectively of the drivers in front. Very, very interesting to see. Uh, I mentioned Matt Malone maybe, by the way, struggling a little bit in terms of qualifying speed not struggling in the race four positions gained for him already up to 10. Uh, we can tell you thank you very much to uh, weatherman justin malella that the uh, the rain has stopped now so uh the, the track conditions will change out there for these drivers but arjuna we've got a couple more guests joining us we've got matt malone we've got grizzle joining us once again uh, really embroiled in this fight now for 10th spot. Matt, I, I maybe said you were struggling with your pace in qualifying in these wet conditions. What's happening? How are you feeling? Uh, well, once the race starts, you know, and I uh, take a look at the track conditions, take a look at the puddles, uh, you know, I'm measuring the size of the puddles with my eyes every lap, you know, to really determine the, the moistness of the track. Uh, but it's going well. I'm, I'm staying ahead of Grizzle. Now, he may have some damage. I'm not sure. But usually I can't stay ahead of him. But I'm doing pretty good. What's the report? Damage or not? Um, I think it's a skill issue at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to avoid all that first lap craziness. It was quite chaotic. Well, and talk to us about riding in the spray. We're talking a lot about it, Grizzle, but you know, you're trying to hunt down Matt Malone, trying to get close. It gets worse in terms of visibility. We saw you with your hands trying to see a little bit more closely. H how do you follow? Well, Thankfully, these cars have, uh, you know, these red lights flashing around. And, uh, you know, as Matt Malone's demonstrating, go, by going side by side, <laughs> um, it, it really helps with the spray and uh, kind of, you know, seeing the, uh, the distance that you're at with the uh, person that you're fighting with. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad that that is a, gr it's a great invention and, like, a really good invention for sure. It, but it means you have to trust the driver in front of you. Do you trust Matt? No. 
as I almost just drove into the rear of him, uh, I do trust Matt. Uh, he's got a, he's got that freedom, you know. So uh, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> believe in it. <laughs> there we go. Battle for 10th will continue. Uh, we'll leave you guys be for the time being, but I'm sure we'll check in and disturb you once again very soon. Because, Paul, these drivers right now keeping each other very, very, very honest and heading down to turn number one. Grizzle looking to the outside on the racing line to try and make this move as well. Oh, oh dear. Oh, man, that's a big problem for Matt Malone. Um, oh, hopefully no, it doesn't wipe out of a car. <laughs> Well yeah, done, I will say, well done, Matt, and keeping that out of uh, out of everybody else. Beep, beep. Woo. Those white lines, are, those white lines are slippery. <laughs> Amazing save that one, Jesus! Yikes! As uh, we carry on there, thank you guys for Thanks. that, and uh, well. <laughs> That was uh, good timing for us to actually have uh, Matt Malone in, in the commentary box there, Arjun, because we could get that reaction. We also get reaction from the race leaders as well. Yes, we didn't kick him out of the booth just in time to capture that, but we oh, now man. bring in Casey and the Pulpa Lopez, who's already feeling stressed and now even more stressed. How are you feeling out front, uh, uh, Pablo? Stressed. <laughs> Casey, you you saw Quirk make a mistake. Now you're up to second. You're putting the pressure on. You've got the round wheel out. We were wondering, is that strategic? Is that technical? No, yeah, I had uh, the cable went bad <laughs> in my formula wheel, so I got the the old sequential shifter going. I'm driving one-handed while trying to shift to the corners and stuff. It's uh, it's a little weird, but it's all I got uh, for this. So, uh, but hey, I. Uh, we got an NASCAR road race here in a few days, so it's what I'm going to be using then. So it's maybe keep speed rated a little bit better for that. Who knows? Uh, perfect training, man. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There you go. Good practice. I mean, we've got five minutes left in the sprint race, and then you've got to fight your way forward from uh, the back in the main race. You guys are fighting for the championship. How much tension is there, guys? Come on. The, the fans want to see some excitement. But the, the next race will be dry, so it will be more difficult to overtake, I think. I mean, it will be more, more safe, but if it's in the dry the next race, uh, we will have a hard time passing the people and maybe something will happen, I don't know. I, I hope not for uh, a bad thing, but I had some places not lucky last, last race, so maybe the karma comes into play today. I like the sound of that. Casey, you're, of course, hunting for another championship here in the Porsche All-Stars. Uh, you've already got one of our Porsche Tag Heuer connected watches. You'd get another one. But what would it mean, especially given that I feel like the competition this year has been wild. We've only, uh, we've never had a repeat main race winner so far this season. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, it's been a much more competitive year. I feel like it gets more competitive every year. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, everyone has a lot of fun with it. I have a lot of fun with it. Um, it's one of the more fun things we get to do is to just kind of all hang out and race uh, before the pros do it on these Saturdays. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'd be cool to, to win another one. Obviously, I just want to have a good battle with Pablo. It's the main thing. Uh, I haven't turned a single lap in the dry. I've only been practicing in the wet, so I feel like it might be worse <laughs> for me when it goes to dry. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it all shakes out. I can tell you right now that uh, eight points, that's all that separates you guys in terms of the championship standings. Casey still leads. Pablo sits in second. So no pressure, guys, as you fight your way through the back in the next race. Championships on the line. Just be careful I mean, as you're passing we can, traffic. We can trade the Tag Heuer Porsche Edition if you want, if you want Casey. No, no problem. <laughs> Start making deals. <laughs> well, look at this, Paul. I mean, you know, we're trying to put Casey off. Clearly, we're still failing to do so, and so we'll leave them be for the time being. But I think we're going to very much look forward to race number two, where if it is in the dry, like Pablo seems to expect, he thinks it will be difficult to fight his way forward. Uh, I mean, it can be around uh, around the sponsor circuit. It really can, but uh, certainly uh, uh, there is opportunities out there if they're able to uh, to make them. I will say, by the way, all this talk of these uh, watches, I must have had mine get lost in the post or something. But uh, anyway, uh, as we carry on in this intense battle at the front then, it's the Pulpa Lopez, only a tenth and a half ahead of Casey Kerwin. But uh, 
catching is one thing, passing is another, and you can see, visibly see that track, it is getting drier now. It's, it's not going to be full slick by the end of this race, but the second race of the afternoon here should be dry, so therefore a different challenge for these drivers. Plunge downhill then, underneath the banking once again, and Case is looking offline, and sometimes in these type of mixable conditions, Arjuna, that's sometimes the better line to be breaking on. And, and this is where I find as well that the real change with this iRacing weather system is going to be, especially when we end up talking about introducing rain at the top level of sim racing to, for example, the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. You're going to find that all the drivers with enough practice figure out the condition. When it starts changing, though, that's what they've got to then come to grips with, and that's where I think we're really going to find the best rise to the top. We've got the triple box on screen right now. Race for the lead at the top, race for fifth, bottom left, race for 13th, bottom right. So uh, battles all the way through the field. White flag in the air, so one more lap to go here in this sprint race in the uh, Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup All-Stars onto the brakes. And the Popa Lopez did get it a little bit deep, but uh, Cups with it nicely on the exit of the Recifelia. Great thing about this track is basically every corner is a passing opportunity. Uh, even if the driver in front of you doesn't make a mistake, it's all about the setup, right? For example, out of that first chicane, just compromise the driver in front to get a poor exit, gives you the chance to look to the inside. Casey's going to have to see Pablo cover it off, and I'm loving what I'm seeing, but Casey's also running out of time. Ascari may be the final chance to really have a move because the lunge into the final corner is never really on unless you want to try and make it a drag race to the line. Can I just say, by the way, a great race for third place as well, Emery and Quirk, and the, the battle that those two have had over the years here in the All-Stars, and it's great to see Emery up there considering for her and for Daniel Gray, the, the time in the morning that they're having to wake up, I wouldn't be able to race in these races at that time of the morning. Into the breaking zone for the Ascari chicane, and, and Casey's just not quite there. He's not close enough to make a move as they come through the left, right, left, onto the power, careful of the AstroTurf on corner exit. The Pulpa Lopez just needs to hang on for one more corner. You can see the focus on the Pulpa Lopez's face. Casey's going for the wide line in. He's going to try and maybe get the cutback, but no. The Pulpa Lopez holds the inside line. He blocks it off. A little bit of a sigh of relief, a punch of the fist. The Pulpa Lopez, he takes the race win here in the sprint race, which means that the championship will go down to that main race. It's not a long enough run, really, to the timing beam to get the drag, especially in these conditions. Commentated on some neck-and-neck -neck finishes, but really you need to be well, well alongside into the braking zone. Battles behind as the dry line continues to build. These drivers now get the final taste of these wet conditions because, Paul, I've looked at the weight, weather radar. Indeed, it is going to be a very dry main race, and it's going to be interesting how these drivers take the warm-up session after this to adapt to the conditions as we had almost near crash there. And there is our unofficial race results then for the sprint race. The Pulpa Lopez and Casey Kerwin separate by less than a tenth and a half. Embry in third ahead of Quirk with Love 46 in fifth. Great to see at Love 46 up there in the top five. It's Kenny 500 ahead of Daniel Gray. Sampsoid, Kat, Tony Kanan and Grizzle round out your top ten. Matt Malone after his big, big scary moment. Uh, the uh, turn number one, he finishes 11th ahead of Strati. Dan Suzuki, Paul Giazzo, Storm Molina, and basically did not finish the race. So that is the first race of the evening done. And you quite rightly say, Arjuna, the forecast is nice and clear, nice and dry out there for the drivers. It's amazing what uh, a little bit of sunshine can do. Yes, and again, they don't have to go through now the pain as well of understanding the drying track. They get five minutes, you can see they're already instantly trying to jump out onto track and get a, a feel for the conditions, and I think it's going to be a really entertaining main race. How does Casey, uh, Kerwin, and Pablo Lopez, the Popo Lopez, work their way from the back of the field, knowing that, you know, effectively, 
single digit points now split them in the championship ball. It's a great way to close off the All Stars and get us set for the main event, the Super Cup, where a championship is still yet to be determined. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if we get this in the Porsche Tagore Sport Super Cup after this, going down to a final race with single digit points, uh, I think I'd make me a very happy man uh, right now. Um, now, We've got uh, three minutes, three minutes 15 remaining of the warm-up session. And this is going to be all about adaptability, isn't it, Arjuna? After you've been spending so much time in the rain, in the wet, how you can adapt yourself in just five minutes to these fully dry conditions? Yes and no. It's, uh, I think the adaptability is really where we talked about the end of that last race, right? With the, the rain stopping and the dry line building, where you then started moving your car. To be honest, Paul, most of these drivers have done plenty of laps in the dry here at Monza. So it's kind of how do they turn that muscle memory back on in, in many ways. And, and that's kind of what we are going to end up talking about when it comes to probably the Super Cup uh, and rain uh, uh, whenever it happens, right? Because it's also at that level when everyone just goes out there, the amount of time that they get to put in, muscle memory reigns supreme. And that's our excuse, Paul. We have day jobs. That's why we're not top level sim racers. I think even if I didn't have a day job, I don't think I'd be a top-level sim racer. Paul, I'm come on. No, no. I'm past it for top-level sim racing, apparently. I'm 40 years old now, Arjuna. No, no, no. <laughs> never say never. I mean, you've got the likes of Jimmy and Tunas that's still out there for the Apex Racing team, uh, continuing to perform at high levels. Uh, never say never, Paul, right? Um, well, I, th I think as long as I keep a day job, then <laughs> we won't be able to find out. Uh, Dan Suzuki there on screen. Didn't have a, a good first race in the wet, but that does mean that he's now going to be starting up towards the front of the grid for this main race. 25 minutes. And you can see just how much lock he's having to put on there through the steering. That's something that we don't really talk about with that uh, Retifilio chicane. Just how tight it is through there. I'm quite curious to get his thoughts as well, how he feels like the the motion underneath them actually helps in those rain conditions, right? Because we're talking about adaptability. I wonder if that gives you a little bit more of the seat in the pants feeling and, and the, the understanding of how the car is moving underneath you. Borges Azo's got his hand up talking to his chat as well. So clearly enjoying everything that's happening. Spanish Minister of Defense gonna enjoy what's gonna happen in this inverted uh, main event. You mentioned drivers not enjoying uh, and having the strongest sprint race, Paul, in the dry conditions. Most of those drivers are now at the front of this main race, aren't they, with the full invert? So, they're going to be thrown right into the thick of the action. Yeah, absolutely. Basic Ollie, don't forget, did not finish that first race. He's going to be started from pole position. Um, I'm not going to say it was a ploy of his, but it's, it's <laughs> a good place to be starting from. But inver inversely as well, though, if you're at the front, you're creating a big hole in the air for everybody else in the field. Yes, but we've seen Basic Ollie win one of our main races before. We know he can deal with the pressure. The question is going to be if he can break the toe. Around 1.3 seconds is the crucial margin to those behind. As they start to fight amongst themselves, maybe some of the slower drivers now further in the running order at the start, you know, costing others time. If he breaks the toe, he could very realistically be in a situation where there's not enough time for those at the back to fight their way to the front as the checkered flag will come down here for the warm-up the drivers will get themselves set for the main race here today and uh, it's going to be the final opportunity for people to be able to get themselves a championship position basically in storm Molina on the front row with borgia sazo and dan suzuki row number two strati and matt malone on row number three grizzle and tony Kanan on row number four ahead of samsoid and daniel gray Kenny 500 and 46 on row 6. Quirk and Emery row 7. And then the two at the front of the championship. Casey Cohen and the Pulpo Lopez right at the back of your 16-car grid. So, it is the final opportunity for these uh, All-Stars to be able to get out there on track, to have some fun. And I'm sure we'll be having a lot of fun with them as well. The engine revs rise. It's a long haul, but away we go in the end. And a basically does get a better start than Sol Molina at the front. 
bad start the back for Quirk. He's been left behind as we go down towards the Retifilio for the first time onto the brakes. And it's all very careful further back in the pack. He can end up almost at a standstill if you're at the rear of the field here. But they make it all through the Retifilio on this first occasion. Through Curva Grande, and Matt Malone has got a little bit of company with Tony Kennard. Also behind them, Grizzle and Kenny 500. They're fighting it out as well. Tidily through the first chicane. Now can we be as tidy through the second chicane? Dry conditions, not really building a breakaway just yet. But now, as one car digs two wheels off into the gravel, causes a checkup reaction. Daniel Gray is going to try and get to the inside as three wide further behind. But behind Matt Malone, Tony Kanaan still in the uh, hot pursuit as through the double Lesmos they sweep and the run to Ascari beckons. Uh, I, do you know what? Uh, uh, as much as I love talking to Tony Kanaan, I would, I would love for him to have a good result. And uh, I do not want us to talk to him. I want him to be able to have a good result here. Um, it would be... Uh, Great to see him there as they go through the Ascari chicane for the first time then. Dan Suzuki in hot pursuit of Basie Collie. One second is the gap, so he's getting close, dangerously close, towards that, uh, that limit of the slipstream. But as you get further and further down the straight there, that gap starts to narrow. So uh, Dan Suzuki got his sights set in front. Storm Molina is in fourth behind. And Paul Giazzo, she's got Strani all over the back of her car right now. So uh, she's under some pressure as uh, Strani pulls out to driver's left. But uh, just in the background, a the shot there. And as they head into the chicane once again, onto those brakes, hard ah, onto those brakes, and Strani does make it pass. Uh, if we want, by the way, Paul, what we can do is help Tony Kanan talk to every driver in front of him to slow them down and help him rise through the field. That would be a great way to close the season off because poor TK, yeah, we have, we have tortured him a fair bit. Front of the field, basically in danger of breaking away, and this is where Borges has got to be careful. If he starts fighting with Dan Suzuki, all they really will do with one another is peel themselves away from that draft in front. So two options. One, try and work together, swap back and forth, help each other out, close the gap that's now building, or he's going to have to sit patient, hope that Dan Suzuki has got the pace, and in the later stages, try and make something happen. The Popo Lopez, 13th at the moment, gained three places. Casey Kerwin, 11th, gained four places so far in this race. The race for seventh place, that's ongoing right now. Matt Malone leads that one, as we said, ahead of Kenny 500. Daniel Gray, Grizzle, and then there's Casey Kerwin, and the rest behind them as well. To go through the Ascari chicane, down this back straightaway. And so Malone will be looking forward to try and get the slipstream of TK, but also be looking behind to try and hold back uh, the uh, driver behind of Kenny 500. So, uh, yeah, interested to see how we get on out there. Uh, we are joined, though, by other guests of this uh, broadcast, Arjuna. We've got Storm Molina. Sounds like Storm Molina's having fun as well. How are you feeling? I think it's fair to say start of the season. It's a bit scary. End of the season, a little bit better? Yes, much better. Less of frame. It, does it help as well that we're in the GT3 R? Oh, I feel like in some ways the 963, the 992 Cup cars, um, I'll speak from personal experience, they're a lot harder than this one. I don't know, I think I like the Cup car the best. Oh, okay, so we're going to put you in that for, for the future, I think that's what we've decided. Monza, yes, how are you feeling with the racing? Because you've got TK behind you, he's looking very close. Yes, he's very close, he's very close. Oh, God. And yes, oh. now he's in front. Now we'll follow him. I, I apologize, but that was strategically calculated by the broadcast here. We are trying to help TK work forward because we tortured him a lot. Uh, in terms of fighting forward, uh, how do you work your way through the rest of this race? 20 minutes left to go. How do you hold on here? Uh, I have no idea. I can barely remember to breathe right now. I'm just going to follow Matt and hope he leads me through safely. Uh, well, I'll speak from my personal All-Star experience. I totally understand what you're going through. We'll enjoy the rest of your race, and it's been great to have you as an All-Star this season. 
it's been great to be here. Paul, I can't imagine how scared she was in round one, and it's great to see she's enjoying herself at the end of this season. Oh, you've got the, uh, you've got to enjoy the All Stars. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, is that so? Uh, it's certainly one for them. And Arjuna, we're, we're joined by the man who had the biggest moments in race one, Matt Malone. But we're not going to talk to Tony Canal as much as the broadcast team wants us to. No, I'm going to leave TK alone. Matt, come on, T what happened there in that in that opening race? Uh, you tried to break into the opening corner and he almost hit a couple of cars. Uh, it was the white line, uh, it was moist, and it gave no grip under braking. That was the uh, major issue. And yeah, I just lost it while I was side by side with uh, Grizzle. And I hadn't really braked in that particular area in the turn one yet. And I caught a puddle or a white line or something, just lost all grip and then just I'm just so glad I didn't take anyone out. We're still learning, it seems, about the rain. And so white lines, avoid. That's lesson one that you've learned. How does it now feel? Paul was kind of wondering. We switched to the dry. Did you need that warm-up session to kind of get back to, uh, to understanding how this sort of condition raced? Or was it basically muscle memory and it was like a, going back to playing old VHS tape? I mean, it did help a little bit of warm-up. But yeah, this is just back to normal. Old, good old eye racing, bunch of grip breaking late, full throttle out of corners, this is great. I, I know, Matt, that's how we can tell that you're you're not one of these young kids because you didn't raise a, a comment when I said VSH, uh, VHS tape. You actually knew what I was talking about. We've had, a, we've had a fun season, I think, Matt. You've joined us as a commentator on a few occasions. What's been your most fun race this season? Oh, man, it's, I mean, I can't really just pick one out. Uh, they've all been good and it's a good group of people. It's really, Pesk has really come a long way, and Pesk All-Stars, and this is just, it's just so much fun. And I'm driving with Tony Kanata. I mean, all my dreams have come true. And, you know, I'd say one of the worst additions to the Pesk All-Star series is that Daniel Gray guy, you know? He comes in, and he's going to win a, a watch right out of the gates. He's from Australia driving upside down. I don't know how he does it. You know, maybe we'll have to take a look at his application for next season. You know, maybe we may or may not bring him back. <laughs> No, it's been great. I love this series. All of this Daniel Gray slander as you pass Tony Kanan as well. So, uh, uh, Matt, you you are the full package, a true professional. What What's in the future? What's the, what does the rest of 2024 hold for you? Uh, what will your fans be able to watch you do? Oh, just, you know, some random Mazda races. And uh, we got to finish out the uh, American Muscle Series, which is Tuesday nights, one of the best leagues. We drive the old uh, Mustang car. Oh, we got Daniel Gray that's joining us. Oh. Now, Daniel, uh, Matt's just thrown some severe slander your way. I regret to inform you. Oh, no. Was, what was, what no, was no, Daniel. Daniel, I was saying how great of an addition you were to PESC All-Stars. And it's just I'm really super happy and not jealous at all that you come in and first, first year in, you're going to win a watch. I mean, I'm just super happy about it. <laughs> I definitely have not won that watch yet. I'm, I'm panicking right now. Okay, well, I'm 17 <laughs> in points, okay, buddy? <laughs> There's not even 17 of us out here. I don't know how it's possible. <laughs> I think, Matt, Matt, that would put you behind me in points, which mathematically <laughs> okay. would, would mean you've done plenty of bad things. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure you did. Daniel, how are you feeling now? You've got Casey Curran behind you, Kenny 500 in front, and then you've got some gap up the road to Matt Malone. How do you go and catch him and, and put some pressure on his mustache? Well, uh... You know, like, uh, Matt, Matt's got that uh, that bald eagle American speed happening, you know? But, uh, look, I'm just, I'm just going to try and... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and get past Kenny, try to uh, maybe get some bump draft from Casey here. We'll see how generous he's feeling and uh, see if I can catch him. But honestly, um, being in the dry after the wet was such a jarring experience that I think we're all, like, slowly getting used to it. Like, lap times are all over the place. Oh! It's good to hear you say that. Paul was kind of wondering if you would need this kind of adjustment period, and uh, me and Matt were kind of thinking it might be a bit more muscle memory. Daniel's trying to get a move done now on Kenny 500. Oh, but watch out for Casey Cohen, Daniel. Yeah, Casey's pretty good at driving, as it turns out. I, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> it's not looking too good for me here into the chicane, boys. So d deep on the brakes. That's what I've been told is a great defensive move, as deep as you can go. Oh, unfortunately, Casey gets it done. Come on, Daniel, we're going to cheer you on here. How can we help you pass Casey? Do we need to go disturb him for you? 
Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Just maybe, like, get him to sing, like, some national anthems or something. Get him to sing some songs. Like, I think that'll, uh, that'll help. Porsche Karaoke will take the request from the Twitch chat. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll stop disturbing you for a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. This whole is great. I, I love, I love this series. I love commentating on it. Getting that, uh, that live in in car uh, reaction from drivers as well. It's always good to hear from them. And uh, I, I know we heard Casey say it earlier on, but this this season of uh, of the All Stars, it really has sort of picked up, hasn't it? And uh, it's given us some tremendous action, but some memorable moments as well. Yes, and you know. We, we kind of wondered whether Basic Ollie was going to break away. Don't mean this in any disrespect to him, but given the quality of drivers that we've had, you know, the Casey's, the Pablo's, the, uh, the guest drivers that we've had, for Basic Ollie to potentially be the first repeat main race winner, I think goes to show where the series has gone. And look at the fight that we now have a second. Not the Spanish Minister of Defense today, it's the Spanish Minister of Attack. Yeah, so Bolshazar or Dan Suzuki are certainly uh, battling each other as they go along through Curva Grande then. This is all for second place as we go towards the uh, De La Roja. Now you do have to be uh, careful and not fight too much or else uh, basically will really just walk away at the front. But Dan Suzuki back in the, uh, the car into the chicane there, getting the back end out on corner entry. Um, I know it's a rearranging car, is this one, but uh, I mean, that's that's not going to help the rear tyres uh, backing it in there, like uh, almost like uh, MotoGP style. Yeah, but when MotoGP riders do it, it looks very, very yes. cool. Here, it does look cool, but you also just wince a little bit as you see the tyres and you feel the temperatures start to spike, the energy going through them. That margin's growing quite large right now, and this is what I was saying earlier, right? Borja Zazo's waited long enough, he's let the gaps build behind. Now he's going to decide when he can make this move, when he can la launch that offense that's going to make him be able to slide past. Because you've got to keep in mind, Strati's closing from behind. Now that we've stopped talking to Matt Malone as well, he's being repassed by Tony Kanaan. I'm just saying, Matt Malone might be faster when we're talking to him than when we're not talking to him. Yeah, we seem to focus him, we really do. As uh, we go on board then with the Popo Lopez, and well, let's give you a little bit of the sights and sounds of what's going on. This is uh, a little bit of full throttle action from Burrs. the sound of 565 horsepower flat six engine as uh, these drivers carry on into the final 10 minutes of this race. Daniel Gray's losing positions here. He's got to be careful in all of this, but uh, Quirk is the latest one ahead, but he's fighting back on this one. And you look behind them, you've got Grizzle, Stormolina, Emery, 
Emery, in fact, just making a move on Storm Molina. Sam Soy, Love 46, has had some technical issues, but he's back out there uh, on the track. The race for second, Dan Suzuki still ahead of Borja Zazo, and Stradi has joined the party there. So it's a trio for second place. Then, if you look further down, 10th place is that battle that we were looking at earlier on. But Casey Kerwin, crucially for him, is ahead of the Pulpo Lopez in 7th and 8th places, respectively. Yep, if the race finishes like that with Casey in front of the Pulpo Lopez Championship, effectively is decided, given that Casey came in with that slender advantage to this main race in the final round of our championship so should be rather easy and we'll be able to keep an eye on Casey back towards second though look how Stradi we were noticing how he was slowly closing and last time by it was actually more than seven tenths of a second that he ended up gaining it was almost close to a full second that he ended up closing up and so suddenly what was a two uh, horse race for second suddenly a three car fight and two of these drivers will sit on the podium to close out the season Dan Suzuki has been watching his mirrors plenty at some point, Borja Zazo has got to pull the trigger. Don't forget, if you are just joining us, these are the All-Stars. They are all running the same setup, so they've all got the same machinery underneath them. It's how they go ahead and use that machinery and get the best out of it. As uh, there goes Borja Zazo to the outside. Oh, and a little bit of a door bang in towards the braking zone. And the Retafilio and more contact between the two of them. Oh, Borges has come across, and here comes Stradi now. He's got the advantage on corner exit. Borges also has got a slow down penalty he's got to serve at some point. But he's got Dan Suzuki right on his tail. From first inclination, I think Borja Zazo a little bit optimistic. Both were trying to pinch Dan Suzuki, which he's well within his rights to do. But then turning in early, he'll then get turned on the nose of Stradi. Three wide into that second chicane was never going to work. And as Dan Suzuki pushes Stradi into the gravel, here comes TK, here comes Matt Malone, all still with eight minutes left to go. Tony Kanan up to third place in this race is having a barnstormer here. And He's got himself back ahead of Matt Malone. When we were talking to Matt Malone, he'd got ahead of TK. So Tony has been able to get back ahead. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, really exciting now for second place, Arjuna. But oh, for second place, you said the operative thing there because eight seconds the margin for Basic Ollie. I mean, at this point, it's well and truly gone. And I don't think we're going to be worrying about the race lead. I think we're going to see our first repeat main race winner though look at the shot though that we see them heading down in towards what i will still call the parabolica what is now the curva alboreto so not just these drivers in the mix casey kerwin there as well just keep an eye on him the pulpo lopez the championship fight closing here too as they come out of the curva alboreto uh, as they go down the start finish straight, here comes TK, Tony Kanaan, the eight seconds behind Basic Ollie. This is the battle for second place, though. Dan Suzuki is going to fight, fight, fight back, and he holds on for the time being. A little bit of a contact between the two of them. Oh my goodness, really close action at the front, really close action further back for Paul Giazzo, who's trying to recover from his uh, incident. And all of this allowing those slightly in front, Casey and the Pulpo Lopez, to, to break away. There's a look, bottom of your screen, by the way. Super Cup qualifying underway. And again, Super Pole qualifying. They get one lap with track limits here at Monza to make the most. And there goes Diogo Pinto flying through the second chicane. And you'll note as well, green banner on the windscreen, green rear wing on the main plate. That's to delineate that he's one of the championship contenders. You'll be seeing that in about 18 minutes time. You're not going to miss any of the race action here on the Porsche Takoya Esports Super Cup. But Pinto is in qualifying. You see those green banners. That's how you're going to identify both him and Sebastian Job. There is Sebastian Job on the bottom of your screen now as well. So they're in qualifying. We'll give you all the results of that in a little bit of time. But we've got five minutes remaining in the All-Stars. And Dan Suzuki has made it back past Tony Kanaan. And, well, he's putting up a pretty stern defensive display so far.
Casey's one and a bit seconds back. He's just within the drafting range in that bright green Spire Motorsports colored entry behind the Popa Lopez and the Team PGZ colors too. If they join this fight, just keep an eye on the fact that championship could very much end up being determined if we see another incident. TK fades to the inside for a moment. And one thing to consider on the run into that first braking zone, on the racing line, the left side, it's actually quite bumpy. And so counterintuitively, being in the middle of the track where it's less bumpy can be a bit of an advantage, not seeing any drivers want to make the most of it just yet. Yeah, certainly uh, they were trying to uh, work their way through. And uh, yeah, I can tell you, I've, I've accidentally made some moves and overtakes in the past into uh, the, the retrofilio at the start of the lap. And it's so bumpy in, on the racing line because you've got so many formulas and GT cars and all sorts of different machinery all breaking, putting that force into the asphalt. And that means that they're uh, causing those bumps to form. We're still carrying on Arjuna, and we have got Basic Ollie, who's uh, in a world of his own right now. He's got the high visibility shirt on, just making sure we all know exactly where he is in the car. But Basic Ollie, nine seconds clear at the front. Did you really think this was going to happen after how, well, the sprint race went? Uh, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. But as soon as I saw how moist the track was, I thought there could be a bit of trouble here. But yeah, I mean, we were just unlucky. It's just one of those things. It's so easy to do with Monza, turn one or two or whatever, and uh, in the rain, it's going to happen. So it is what it is. I mean, it, it put me on par. I want to be able to run away with it for the next one. So happy days. And uh, no pressure on you, uh, because you've got two laps still left to go. You would become the first repeat main race winner this season, which I think is something I've been saying goes to show how crazy the season has been, but also how competitive the season has been with the level of drivers that we have this year. Absolutely, yes. It is a really good field. The strength of field is lobby's 4.6k. There's some very, very good drivers in here. Um, yeah, so very, very pleased to get two wins, even if it... It had to, you know, rely on me starting a pole in the second race. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, these are the longer races. You've got to manage your tires. And, oh, I see smoke and chaos and carnage in the background down through turn number one. Uh, I'm glad that you've been able to avoid all of that. Before we let you go, I want to ask you, favourite car of the three that we've raced this season? Uh, ooh, I'd say this is my favourite, but if you ask me for raw pace, I'd say I'm quick in the GTP, so... Uh, yeah, I, this saw this or the GTP. To be honest, they they were they were great. No love for the cup car. <laughs> yes, but I'm just not very good in it. <laughs> so you know, it's a good car, but I, it, yeah, I, I'm just not that quick in it. So yeah, uh, if I had to pick, it'll be GTP or, or or this car. I think. I think I agree with you, and that's why I made sure I didn't become an all-star when we got to the the cup car in particular. They're pushing each other into the grass in the fight behind you. So. I would like to inform you that your gap's only going to continue building from here. Got one more lap to go. Hold on to it, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Paul, I saw some of the shots of the fight here. I mean, just look at the top yeah. of your screen. More drivers slipping off as TK makes a mistake. Yeah, TK, Tony Kanaan into fourth place now behind Matt Malone. It was TK and Matt Malone were... Uh, well, they were uh, squeezing each other off track out of the Lesmos. I can tell you, Sam Soid has got a mechanical meatball warning flag on his car, but he will be able to finish the race. Uh, the race for third, though, there you see Matt Malone, Tony Kanaan, Casey Kerwin, who's up into fifth place in all of this, and Strati in sixth. This is absolutely tremendous um, as we go into the Retifilio for the final time for the All-Stars. What a season it has been for these drivers. Thoroughly entertaining for us to watch. And, ah, Tony Kanan, he, he just needs a good run out of one of these corners to get himself onto the podium. Yeah, and I think as well, you're seeing a bit of desperation. That's why some of those mistakes are being made. See those live points as they run. As we were saying, all Casey needed to do was finish in front of the Polpa Lopez, and he would win another Porsche All-Stars Championship. The other drivers in the top five, though, Quirk, Daniel Gray, and I think because of that mistake from Sam Soy, Dan Suzuki has jumped his way into the mix. Certainly has, yeah. So that's, uh, that's uh, really intriguing to see how he's been able to get himself up there at the end of the season as we go through. And it was another mistake. There goes Casey Kerwin. 
He's got the move done on Antonio Canan, and here comes Stradi in all of this as well. He's trying to get involved. Oh, Stradi's off. Massive, massive accident. And how on earth has he not collected anybody else in that one? Unbelievable stuff right here at the end of the race, but through the Curva Alboreto for the final time here in the All-Stars. Basic Oli is going to come across as a multiple race winner here this season in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup All-Stars. As we carry on through the rest of the field, Casey Kerwin is going to come fourth. And not only that, he will take the championship here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup All-Stars. Casey Kerwin, great result for him. He did exactly what he needed to do. What a way to close the season out. Seeing our first taste of rain for these Porsche All-Stars, finishing things up in more traditional racing conditions and a bit of a barn burner of a race as well after the rain kind of was all about survival. This was all about the wheel-to-wheel -wheel action and a great way to send us off to the Super Cup. It certainly is great stuff to finish off the season. I've thoroughly enjoyed the All-Stars each and every year. They produce some fantastic action, and it's been great to watch this one indeed. Uh, as we will be getting ourselves as the donuts are being served by Casey Kerwin. Uh, I think he's uh, turned up with a full 12 pack there. We're into the Buzz Post Race Show, and let's take you through your final main race results here in the All-Stars. Basically, it does take the win by 9.8 seconds over Dan Suzuki, who manages to hold on to that second place. Matt Malone in third ahead of Casey Kerwin, your champion. Tony Kanan in fifth ahead of the Pulpa Lopez in sixth. Stradi, Daniel Gray, Grizzle and Quirk round out the top ten. Then it's Emery, Storm Molina ahead of Samsoid, Kenny 500, Borja Zaza, and as I said, technical issues affected a Le 46 rounds out your 16 car field. Wow, what a season. I've, I've absolutely loved the All-Stars here this year. It's certainly been tremendous to watch. And Arjuna, I do believe that uh, you get the, uh, the privilege to speak to our champion. You say privilege, I think Casey Corwin says this guy again. Casey, <laughs> another championship, this time the second Porsche All-Stars crown. Talk to us about this year and another championship to your name. Yeah, it's. Uh, I say it every time. I have so much fun getting the, the privilege to compete with everyone in this series. It's uh, really just a lot of fun uh, to hang out with everyone. And it's fun for everyone's communities and all that to... Uh, basically just get to interact with each other every time we, we do these things so that's really the the main focus uh with this series and obviously you know to win a championship on top of it is awesome and uh yeah it was a great great fight with pablo it's uh kind of at the beginning of the year like we obviously started in prototypes it's a bit more my bread and butter on the roadside and i think gt3s was his uh, uh more his bread and butter and you can kind of see that at the end so um yeah super fun as always with everyone and uh it was fun to spice it up with some rain today and uh yeah just ton of fun as always well, Casey, congratulations on the championship. Thank you so much for joining us as ever for the Porsche All-Stars. And whoever can't wait, can't wait to see what you do for the rest of 2024. We'll jump on over to Basic Ollie, though. Hello. Basic Ollie, hello. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? How are you feeling? A race winner once again in Yay! the Porsche All-Stars. Yes, about to, it was nice. It was good. I, honestly, the first race, I was, I was fuming. But the second race, oh, well. That it makes it all up for it, doesn't it? It's much better. <laughs> I much prefer that one. That was a much better race. Ah, oh, dear. Nice to get a win. I think you're in the middle of saying goodbye to your stream, so I'll let you go and do that. It's That's time so for right. us to say goodbye to the All-Stars because, Paul, the Super Cup lies ahead. What a fun All-Star season we had. Yeah, it's been an absolutely tremendous season to uh, to watch. I've thoroughly enjoyed calling the All-Stars. We've had so many race winners. Uh, it was great to have the uh, Porsche factory drivers join us as well during the season on occasion and uh, them showing a, a bit of class out there as well. But uh, certainly Casey Kerwin does deserve the championship, but the Pulpa Lopez pushed him all the way to the end of the season, that is for sure. But, uh, well... With just a few moments' time before we head to the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup All-Stars. Thank you so much to all of our All-Stars for joining us this year. 
and we hope to uh, to hear from them soon. But uh, stick around, everybody, because right after this, we are going to the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. The season started on the high banks of Daytona Beach. Today, it all wraps up at the Temple of Speed. 30 of the world's best entered with title aspirations. Only two former champions still have a shot. Leading the way is Sebastian Joey. Within striking distance, Dio Robinto. Who has what it takes? Only one can be crowned champion. In this world, it's all about fine lines. The line between success and failure. First place and last. Blurring the lines between reality and perfection. He's gotta leave it all on the line. Sebastian Job and Diogo Pinto, two drivers who have got a Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup championship to the name. They are wanting to join Josh Rogers as a two-time champion. We are here at Monza for the final round of this year's 2024 Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. Paul Smith and Arjuna Kankipati here for you all day. And Arjuna, well, it all comes down to the Temple of Speed. Not traditional season finale. We've not always had blockbuster championship showdowns, if we're being completely honest, but this has something in the air. Last year, Jordan Caruso did enough in race one. We thought it was really about his other championship contenders having issues that meant he was able to sail his way to the championship. This time, I've talked to Job, I've talked to Pinto. What do they want to do? Stay out of trouble, keep it clean. And Pinto's already kind of self-admitted to me, he doesn't know if the championship will be his, but if there is a chance, he'll make sure he's there to fight for it. Well, as you can see, we started all the way at the back at the beginning of February at Daytona. Hockenheim, the Le Mans, Watkins Glen for that mid-season tournament, then Red Bull Ring and Imola, and then today, we are at Monza, so uh, definitely going to be one that we want to see. It's a different format here today. We just get two 14 lap races, no sprint race. That means that they are both main race point payouts. That means 110 points potentially on the line for a driver here today. That changing format, Arjuna, is really going to spice up this championship finale. I think it makes qualifying even more important in some ways because double the points effectively being paid out in the first race now that we call it a, a main rather than a sprint and surprising in some ways that 22 times onto the board six drivers in the one lap they're allowed to put a time not getting the performance they need to running off track having technical issues whatever the case may be and have to start from the very back going to be very very interesting to see how they get on as we get ready to go racing well, our Tag Heuer Pole Award winner this week is Chris Lullum. And, well, we get to join him, who's uh, in the commentary box here now, with our junior. Silly Lully himself joins us. And, Chris, I mean, important to get pole, I think, in some ways at Monza, just so you can stay at the front and kind of control things. But talk us through this lap and the margins that you guys have to deal with. curve left and right and then we have a long uh, long straight here but yeah I mean 
the pressure you have uh, for these one shot qualifying it's not something that's easy to get used to and this year I'd say it's something I'm much better at than I have been in the past well God, obviously yeah. from these quality laps but <laughs> yeah breaking around the 100 here full curve left and right very close to the off track on the right that's always uh, something tough to get under pressure a light break here onto third gear And again, 50 more, 50 board breaking, third gear. All uh, uh, yeah, sorry? You, you seem quite focused when you're, you're looking at this lab, you're talking about all your references and stuff. How many hours of, of you know, qualifying practice do you do to, to get to this place? That's a good point. Uh, well, to be fair, a lot of it is qualifying practice because with such a big grid, such a tight grid in qualifying, uh, a, lot, a lot of it comes down to where you qualify. So, yeah, uh, in terms of hours, I would say on track 15 to 20 hours a week for this series uh, is, is what you should aim for. If you want to be competitive at the front, and I'm sure some people do more, some people do less. But yeah. And then here, fourth gear. Quite, uh, you really have to trail break here, otherwise you can understeer wide, and then that's the lap down. And yeah, minimize the distance to the line. That was a smooth lap with no mistakes. Well, was it your best lap? I've got to ask how far off your optimal were you there? Oh. I wouldn't say there's more than a tenth in that. It's a pretty good lap maybe, there. Maybe a, tenth. maybe a tenth. Pretty good lap for Chris Lullum, Silly Lully, as he grabs pole position and will lead us to the green here at the first of our main races. But we're joined by the uh, Tag Hoyer Pole Award champion over the course of the season, Sebastian Joe, who joins us now, of course, fighting for the championship. Sixth in qualifying today. Sebi, how are you feeling going into today's activities? Um, yeah, a little bit... Um... Not thrilled, really, with that quality lap. Uh, I had really good pace there, but I, I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to take it very easy. Uh, and then I cranked up to 100 and went really easy in some of the corners. Um, so, yeah, not not a great lap. It was two tenths off what I did in practice, and I already wasn't very happy with that lap. Uh, but the main thing is I, I set a lap, and that was what I cared about, just putting a lap in somewhat near the front. Uh, could have been a bit quicker, but I'm not here to get pole today uh just want to try and finish both races but, yeah could be worse no points in qualifying paid out to either of you so the championship gap stays where it is diogo's going to be starting you know right in your kind of area what do you need to do to main races today rather than the sprint in the main uh yeah it's gonna be very tricky um very very patient uh two 30 minute races i think it's just gonna be staying out of uh out of any issues any contact you look ready to go racing. We'll leave you be. Good luck for the yes. championship hunts, and we'll be talking to you, I'm sure, later tonight. Thank you. There you go. It's always great to hear from our pull award winner, but we have got our penultimate grid of the season here. Chris Lullum then gets himself his first ever pole position for the rookie here. Alongside him, Williams Esport, home hero, Alessandro Pico, Jordan Caruso, reigning champion. It's his final races as champion with Alejandro Sanchez alongside him. Dino Lombardi and Sebastian Job on run number three. Championship contender Diogo Pinto right alongside Johan Ha with Jakub Maciejewski and Cooper Webster. Row number five, row six, Oscar Virine and Julian Sonnen. Marina Sarika and Zach Campbell share row number seven with Luke McEwen and Josh Thompson on row number eight. Brian Collins and Matthias Stuckbeck, ninth row of the grid. Row 10 for Luca Kita and Salva Talons with Sam Kaita, the pole sitter last time on row number 11. And row 12 then, oh, well, alongside him, sorry, is Parker White. Row 12 is Gustavo Ariel Lasse back. These are drivers who did not set lap times either. Uh, Simone Maria Marcena, Matti Sipola, Michael Janney, and Kevin Nielsen. And get this out, Juna, with 30 seconds to go. The whole field that set a qualifying time, just half a second separating 22 cars. In some ways, I'm honestly a little bit surprised that it's not even tighter at a track like this where, you know, so much uh, momentum that you're trying to carry forward. But I guess it goes to show that you know, some drivers setting a banker lap and trying to focus on that, especially knowing, Paul, that they want to be at the front where the danger is hopefully at its least. Well, the drivers, they've done their qualifying. They've now got to focus themselves on two main races. 14 laps ahead of them here as the drivers will look to the starters' gantry. 
the engine revs rise. And we are underway here at Monza and a great launch from pole position for Chris Lullum. Biko affected straight away, trying to block off Jordan Caruso down towards the Retifilio for the first time. Who's it's coming down the inside? It's Sanchez. Sanchez trying to make the move from the inside. It was three wide for second on corner entry. Everybody's going to make their way through the Rexophilia for the first time. But it's Lullum from Caruso, but Sanchez and Bico, they're not quite done yet. And I think showing how important it is to stay out of trouble. Both Job and Pinto losing spots on the start, allowing Johan Half to be aggressive into the second chicane. Still side by side between Sanchez and Bico. And as they work off the corner, Bico lucky not to get into the gravel and lose some momentum. His Williams Esports teammate did further down through the field. It's caused a bit of a Constantina, Biko still on the outside though, and now passed by Dino Lombardi for four. All that fighting for third place has allowed the front two to make a breakaway. So we've got a breakaway at the front, and then the peloton follows them. It's Lillen, Caruso, Sanchez now. He's going to be careful because Dino Lombardi is putting the pressure on. We're looking back from Johan Halfscar because he has got Sebastian Job and Diogo Pinto behind him. Now, Job, if he finishes where he is now, is going to extend that championship lead, and that means that he'll be able to just eke out a bit more of a comfort gap going into that championship finale. Pinto, though, he needs to make places to fight for that championship. You can see them highlighted in green on the left, but it goes to the mindset again, right? He knows that there is the advantage that Job has in points coming into this and it's going to take a disappointing day for Job for Pinto to be involved all he's trying to do stay out of trouble make sure second is solidly his and if something happens he'll be there ready to pick up the pieces Biko's being absolutely freight trained by the way great job in qualifying but maybe just a bit of a, a, a sitting duck in a straight line because even though he's now still on the outside fighting with Johan Hart he's gone from second to sixth in just one lap and as the top two break away and run away great fighting behind and why we finished the season off Paul at Monza well this is exactly why I always remember Johan Half's drive uh, a few years ago to get himself back into qualifying contendership he always seems to do well here at Monza does Johan Half so he'll be one to look out for here today in the Apex Racing Team car uh, through we go with your leaders the Lullum hasn't been able to get ahead of uh, Caruso here. I think Jordan Caruso would love to finish his season with a race win this season because, uh, well, he's not had a single race win here all year, not being the way he would have wanted to have defended his championship. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, uh, I was actually just looking through the record books and seeing that in general our champions haven't always necessarily had a great run as they come to defend their championship the best was uh, josh rogers when he finished second even joe pinto they've all been down in fifth in points so it goes to show that you know winning a championship takes such consistency that can be hard to maintain i don't think caruso will go for the lead just yet it's a longer race than normal 14 laps again probably wait until the last five or six build this advantage up and then really make a dash for it towards those closing stages as they go across the timing line once again underneath the uh, podium here at monza is that timing line here comes caruso then so he's going for it for the lead and lullen he doesn't fight that one um he certainly was just happy to let caruso to get ahead because i think he realizes does uh, as Chris Lillen that it's not all about just leading every lap here it's all about having that gap back and being in the right place at the right time to be able to make some moves speaking of moves it's still Sanchez ahead of Lombardi with half Bika and then Job and Pinto if that top eight finishes as it is Diogo Pinto would be starting on pole position for the second main race and Job alongside, so it would be a very interesting front row and the championship uh, protagonist would control the speed from the top. Look, bottom right though for a second, big block being thrown by Moreno Sarika and Josh Thompson who might be in one of his final races of, as a professional sim racer, tries to put the pressure on and ends up having to lift and roll off of that speed. And uh, Paul, you know, I mentioned briefly, potentially the last race for Josh Thompson is a professional sim racer. 
He's had an interesting ride, roller coaster ride, in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. I think he was another one that would want to end his season on a high. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly would. And uh, to be honest, I think a lot of these drivers, after the season that we've had, a really short season, we had that mid season tournament that really sort of mixed things up a bit. Uh, did that one. I, I think that these these drivers will want to uh, to finish on a high. Multiple races going on on screen. The race for the lead up the top, bottom left, race for seventh place, still held by Sebastian Job that Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing car. And then the race for 20th, the last point place is 20th place. And that is Luca Kita, who currently holds that over his teammate Salva Talens in that Stormforce racing outfit. But across the line, they all go again and still no moves being made at the front here, but I think that's just purely because Mullen realises uh, to not push things too early. And tyre management, you know, we've not really talked about it uh, this week. Tyre management could come in to be a factor because track temperature is 34 degrees Celsius. It, it's one of those things where the, the R racing weather system is not affecting these cars with rain, but it does impact how those temperatures are generated and how they then cycle from here. So 34 degrees Celsius, I wonder what uh, various drivers were thinking. I didn't get the sense from talking to any teams that they thought there was going to be too many games being played around tires. We've seen, let's be honest, some, some interesting stuff, for example, at Le Mans this season, where they've really been trying to make every opportunity they can. It seems as though, I think, for the most part, Paul, part of what they're all worried about, similarly to when we go to the Red Bull ring, is incident limit. How do, how do they ration their incident points so that at the end of these 14 laps, they can take some liberties, run wide, and not be too concerned about the ramifications of a penalty? For anyone who is new to watching an iRacing broadcast and wondering what uh, Arjuna means by the instant limit, well, there's a no-fault uh, penalty system here on iRacing in the server, so uh, if you go off track, that is going to accumulate one incident point. If you lose control of your car, that's two incident points that you accumulate per incident, uh, per occurrence of that happening. And if you have heavy contact with another car, that's four incident points. Now these drivers have only got 17 to play with here in both of these races. Um, so you're absolutely right, Arjuna. Managing that, uh, that instant limit is certainly going to be the key to part of this uh, racing, especially when they're all close in uh, in boxes, really in sort of tight fights throughout the field. Yeah, and we actually, I, the reason I thought about the incident limit was this Thursday in the Porsche Esports Canada world, where we have both the Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge and Porsche Esports Carrera Cup. The Sprint Challenge has the GT4 Caymans. We were at the Red Bull ring, and our leader, our winner of that race, actually said that he had saved some incident points at the end when we started seeing him build his gap up. And we were wondering, was it tires? What was going on? But no, it was just ending up there. And now that Jordan Caruso has that lead, is going to start breaking away. I wonder if he's got that same thing in the back of his mind. Do I have the incident points to really ration to start to build this advantage? Because maybe Chris Lawler behind, struggling a little bit more with the balance of his car in race trim. These drivers, uh, it, it never amazes me that these professional drive, professional sim racers will find every single little bit of competitive advantage. They will find every little nook and cranny of a circuit that we come to and find and test. Is this quicker? What about this? And we're seeing some funny lines like underneath the uh, the bridge at the uh, uh, where the uh, oval, the banking goes over the uh, modern circuit they're, they're using that little bit of asphalt next to the bridge parapet um, to, to just gain that little bit of extra speed and tyre management yeah and we st it's st watching the bottom shot is where I got the most scared there for a sec where they're basically running to the grass on, on the run out of pit lane where you're just going to get some jinx and moves that you don't necessarily expect you're uh, something you pointed out slightly earlier, by the way, in terms of the, the fight for the inverse pole position for the second main event, Sebastian Joe, Diogo Pinto, Cooper Webster. Cooper Webster, I think, already has got two main race victories, both from reverse pole positions. 
However, I think in a race like this, he's probably not going to be too uh, aggressive in forcing the issue just yet. Problem is, Jakub Maciejewski's behind him, along with Zach Campbell, they'll want to work forward. Uh, I can't tell you that there's only one driver who has not been sat in an Oracle Red Bull sim racing car that has won a main race this season. Alejandro Sanchez at the mid-season tournament at Watkins Glen. Stormforce Racing, that's the only time that an Oracle Red Bull sim racing car this season has not won the main race. It shows you just the, the level of, uh, of competition and, and, and the standard that they're working to here in that team. Yes. Uh, and by the way, that Stormforce Racing car, I know we've talked plenty about liveries and what looks great, but that Stormforce car still looks incredible. I love the way the, the, the yellow and black splatters work together and uh, give a bit of a shout out to Juan I liveries for what he's done there. Championship cam, bottom right corner of your screen. Again, uh, Paul had noted this earlier, green windshield banners, green uh, rear wings. That's how you can pick out the two championship contenders amongst their team cars. Just look how much they're going back and forth and they'll run down into the opening corner. Yeah, so you the head down there then. So the race for third, that main screen on the top there, uh, that is Sanchez leading Lombardi. And from half, from Beacom, then you've got the, uh, the championship race between Sebastian Job and Diego Pinto. You're not going to see any silly move I, um, from Pinto. I, I really do not um, think he is that silly to do something like that. I think Diogo Pinto of his first season in Pesk, yes, he would make those moves because that is the type of driver he was then. But he, he very quickly realised what it took to win a championship and it's not getting involved in silly incidents. Yes, and you know, today is championship day on many in many ways here in, in, in Porsche land. Earlier today we had the, the finals of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland where Diogo Pinto was fighting for that championship back in 2021 alongside Max Benneker. And it is crazy to think, right, that's when his journey with Redline began and how much he's evolved, matured, and I guess in some ways emerged as one of the, the shining lights across of multiple different cars for this red line operation. And it is also just remarkable how many top level drivers red line have now. And me and Lewis McClay, we have this argument quite often. What is the best team in sim racing? I don't think there's too many arguments to be made right here, right now to say team red line are the best team in sim racing. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. The, the way that organization is, is really, uh, how it re reinvents itself time and again and just seems to get itself back to the top of sim racing. I was going to point out actually that Diego, uh, Alejandro Sanchez sorry, has been uh, slowly gaining on the race leaders. So uh, those two at the front, not having it all their own way, but Sanchez trying his best, ducking left, right, left, right, down the straight to try and break the slipstream of the Altus Esports driver of Gina Lombardi. Uh, Lombardi, I mean, this is a driver who's uh, another one that's had a bit of a, a back and forth season. His best result, of course, was in the, one of those heat races in the uh, in the Watkins Glen mid-season tournament. The rest of the time was last time out with Imola with two 11 places. It's crazy looking back at the form book, right, as well, as Sebastian Joe's start to the season, how things really began. And Diego Pinto has had a championship-worthy season in many ways, right? I don't think you could make the argument that uh, where, you know, finishing inside of the top six basically in every race is not worthy of a championship. It's just the problem is when you're up against a driver that's finished off the podium twice in a season, there are runs that sometimes cannot be beat. And I'm looking forward to what happens to Sebastian Joe for the rest of 2024, Paul, because after this, we end this championship a lot earlier than we have in years past. What does the rest of his sim racing year look like? Because he's been on such a rich vein of form. They better not hide him away. They better enter him into everything they can. Well, he does have two more weeks of the Rafa Racing Club Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain uh, to compete in and to try and win that championship for Sebastian. So uh, you won't be the last that you see of him in this, uh, this 992 Cup car as we go into 
the Retifilio once again. Six laps to go in this race. It is still Jordan Caruso from Chris Lullum. Chris Lullum has been giving him a little bit of bump drafting here in this one because I think Lullum recognises that, um, that, Sa that Sanchez has been slowly gaining on them. Let's take a little bit further back though then. This is Matti Cipola and there's a move to the inside of the Della Rocha and contact. The other thing you already saw was there was damage on the nose of the Fire of Sims foot car before they even got to the corner. So Matthias Stuckbeck's already been through the wars and uh, yeah, it's a good thing it's the end of the season because uh, there's going to be uh, some angry words I'm sure sent on Discord after this and then the drivers aren't going to have to look at each other for a couple of weeks' time. Well, that is true, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, that is absolutely right there. As, uh, again, Caruso just going to the inside slightly, trying to just block off any potential move um, from Chris Lullum here. I, I think Lullum is, is playing a very smart race here. He's allowing Caruso to lead. He's allowing him to, uh, to just look after uh, everything at the front and to get that slipstream. And then he'll look in the last sort of two or three laps or so, we'll look to make some moves. Those live championship points haven't changed at all um, throughout this race, Arjuna. Uh, it's still 40 points is the gap, which does mean that mathematically it will go down to the final race if things finish as they are. Mathematically, yes, but all Seb would have to do would effectively finish 16th and that would tie them on points if Diogo were to win. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure you go back on tiebreaker with the season that Seb has had. There's no way a tie... You can't come up with a tiebreaker that I don't think Seb is probably going to win. We're talking pole positions, race finishes, fastest laps as well. He's probably got that. Um, yeah, the tiebreaker is not going to be Diogo Pinto's friend. And I just... I, I think it's also crazy, Paul, just to look at the gap back to Caruso, to Johan Haar, and to Alejandro Sanchez. Three drivers who have also had decent seasons, but 104 points behind more than two race victories in just a seven-round championship. It is absolutely stunning, incredible stuff. And uh, I mean, you, you touch it. That, that start to the season that Sebastian had was absolutely incredible. And then he's just managed the lead from there. Uh, when you think about it, Diogo Pinto, the only race win that he's got was one of those heat race wins in the uh, mid-season tournament, which was worth a sprint race wins money, you know, so in terms of points. So uh, that was um, his only race win this season. And that was just against five other competitors on the track at that time. So, uh, yeah, Pinto, he'll be... Uh, I, again, I don't see him making any silly moves. I just think he's going to be very sensible about things and just work his way through. But there you see on screen Cooper Webster ahead of Jakub Maciejewski. Uh, Jakub, I, I, I want to touch on him. He, he's had a difficult season. Got his first ever top 10 result at the Red Bull Ring in the main race. Um, it's been very difficult for some of those rookies out there, but some of them have really flourished. We often talk about second season syndrome, right, for, for rookies, and so that's where you often just need to be able to find your footing, and uh, in Maciejewski's case in particular, right, he doesn't have any teammates that he's working with. He's all by himself or Drago racing, and so that makes it that much more difficult. You don't have people to work with, and I'm not talking about building setups here. I'm talking about doing race practices and understanding what the car is going to do over the course of the run, what you need to do. Again, Chris Lullum told us 15 to 20 hours of practice done. You're not going to just drive by yourself for 15 to 20 hours. So, yeah, that's uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Now, a couple of messages, by the way, Paul, that have been sent in my direction. One asking me to be Bernie Eccleston, to turn on the sprinkler <laughs> system. Uh, sorry, guys, don't have the authority and the power to do that. Uh, the second one, talking about some of the lines that we're seeing into turn one. I saw Yuri Kastop with a message. At some point, if we are side by side, that's going to catch someone out. Just keep an eye on that. Yeah, it is, absolutely. You've got to be careful with that. When you run these, uh, these funky lines, all it takes is somebody to just even have a, a few millimeters of overlap and you come swinging uh, across the track from one side of the track to the other, you're soon going to be facing uh, straight into the arm curl barrier and uh, that'll be your day done. Um, hopefully, 
it doesn't come to that. And we didn't see that at Imola or at Le Mans where we saw some of those interesting lines being taken. But as I say, this is these drivers who have spent all this time practicing, trying to get eke out every single hundredth of a second. Half a second covered the entire field in qualifying. So it shows just you have to take whatever advantages you can get. Half a second in this car as well. I'm just trying to imagine what some of these drivers are thinking about when they go back and after the race compare, you know, data with their teammates and go and take a look at where they're losing and gaining time and uh, all the analysis and agonizing that they go through and trying to really maximize their performance. There's so much that goes into it as we get ready to head into these final laps. And this is weird in a couple of ways, Paul, but, you know, I'm still trying to remind myself, you know, we've been racing here for 12 laps, three to go, uh, including this one, and we've still got a main race to come. This, while the mid-season tournament was lengthy, it blew by because you and I were familiar with Rallycross, fast frenetic. This, very, very different. I've got to imagine for the drivers, it's a bit different as well. It's, yeah, it's going to be a bit different for them, but also it, it's the level of concentration and that mental uh, preparation that they've got to have as well going into uh, this, where you've got two races of 14 laps. Uh, I mean, right now, you're talking sort of 25 minutes or so per race. It doesn't sound that long, does it, when you, when you say it like that, but... The, the level that these guys are working to, the focus and the intensity that they've got here, at the end of today, that some of these drivers are going to be uh, taking a deep breath and thinking, whew, that was some hard work, as we've got a bit of side-by-side -side action a little bit further down our order. This is Zach Campbell, uh, who I think it's fair to say has not been having a great season. And Luke McEwen, now, Luke, I think it's fair to say the last couple of weeks has not had things go his way. Remember, he started the season off on as, as well as it could be, right? Winning the sprint race at Daytona, best of the rookies uh, in many ways. But I, I think ultimately it's a, it's a harsh lesson as to the realities of sim racing. He gets bullied there uh, a little bit by Zach Campbell. You, you have to maintain that speed, that consistency over the course of a full season. And that's not easy to do. Sometimes even if you've competed at uh, you know, top split special events and various private league top levels, World Championship is a whole another stage and the pressure that you have to perform with that. You say Zach Campbell's not had a great season. Looking at the points, he's still the best of the Coanda Esports drivers. Uh, again, no Charlie Collins this season, which I think kind of, kind of skews it for him to be the most senior driver in the team as well. For Coanda, not having the numbers, I think they're going to be looking at this year and kind of wondering, is 10th really the best that we could have done? I know Zach Campbell's been juggling a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, and, and that's going to be, again, where it's difficult, where if you're a driver who your sole focus is sim racing and you're, be, you're able to put that time in and focus all your efforts on that, someone like Sebastian Job or Diogo Pinto at the, at the front of the championship, they've been able to do that. With uh, Zach Campbell, it's all been, yeah, as you say, juggling responsibilities, but managing his time, getting practicing where he can, yeah, it just, just feels that it's not quite been the year for him or for that commander he's bought the team. Right, we're getting ready for the start of the final lap of this opening race of the evening. And Jordan Caruso feeling the need to try and break the slipstream of Chris Lullum, but he can't break it anymore. Here comes Lullum then to the inside, uh, into the Retifilio, onto the brakes. But still, Caruso, if he can hold that outside line, inside for the left-hander, and he bullies his way back into the lead. Last year, Caruso took advantage of fighting at the front to be able to take advantage and break away at one point, but it's a very tightly respectful line being run by Chris Lallum. It's opened oh, him Sanchez. up to the pressure from Alejandro Sanchez as they now run their way down into that second chicane. Remember, final lap, invert this field for the second race, but 50 points still paid out for your winner. There's big stakes on the line, and I do get the feeling into Ascari, Lallum going to be equally looking forward as much as he'll be looking in the mirrors. It's Caruso from Lullum, from Sanchez, and just how that one move down into the Retifilio held up the lead too and allowed Sanchez to get right up to the tail of this lead pair. 
as uh, Lombardi sat behind Sanchez. He's uh, looking and trying to uh, think about making a move onto a podium position as well. The championship leaders, seventh and eighth. You can see them highlighted in green on the left-hand side of your screen. Heading towards the Parabolica for the final time. And again, Caruso feeling the need to try and break that slipstream, try and break that draft of Chris Lullum. Lullum, can he get a run out of this long, sweeping right-hander? If Caruso parks the car on the apex, he can hold him behind. Here we go, to the line. Lullum pulls out, but it's not going to be enough here. And Jordan Caruso gets a race win once again in this championship. His first win of the season here. And Caruso, big sigh of relief to tell just how much pressure he was under. It's only half a tenth of a second between them. Lolland put the pressure on all the way to the line, and that's kind of what we were saying in the All-Stars. You can finish neck and neck, but you need to be a little bit closer to really give it a good go. And as you see the rest of the drivers come through, a reminder, inverted top eight coming, and it's going to be Diogo Pinto first, Sebastian Job second, as we get ready to go for another 14 laps ahead of us uh, here today. Yeah, so that is the first of our main races here today. Let's take you through your race results here from this uh, first race. Jordan Cruiser, uh, winner, half a tenth, as uh, Arjuna says, over Chris Lullum. Sanchez Lombardi, half, and Biko is the top six. Job and Pinto will be starting the next race on the front row of the grid. Cooper Webster and Jakub Maciejewski just miss out on that reverse grid. Is that Campbell ahead of Luke McEwen? And Julian Soden, Oscar Irine, and Gustavo Ariel, Keita Thompson, Keita White, and Lasse back is the last of your point scorers. In fact, no, he won't be because it's a main race. It's even I've been caught out by it. Marcello Sipola, Nielsen, Gianni, and Sarika will be the last of the point scorers. Talons outside of those points. Two drivers did not finish the race. Uh, but we will go and speak to our race winner, Arjuna. Jordan Caruso joins us now. Jordan, uh, officially no longer part of the championship hunt. I'm guessing you wanted to close out the season as best as you can. Victory in the first of two main races. What do you need to do now to try and work your way forward through the second race? Yeah, I mean, I think my race pace is pretty good. Um, obviously stoked to, to sort of put in a, another good qualifying lap and, and to win a race of the season feels really good. Um, but yeah, just coming into this round, I knew like, the fight's really close, sort of from Luke all the way down to, to Sanchez. So I've got to score big points. Um, I think there's potential to move up. So that's the goal. I just got to, yeah, have one more good race, hopefully. And um, yeah, hopefully it turns out well. Talk to us about this year, short season as well. Champions have never really had great success defending their crowns. How do you feel you've, your season's been as a whole? Uh, all things considered, I'm really happy with sort of how the end of the season's gone um i think for a lot of the time we've sort of been missing something here or there but i feel like i've i've maximized it pretty well my race pace and and sort of race craft hasn't been perfect throughout the whole season but considering the first round i had to be sort of fighting for third in the championship um you know obviously i want to be winning but the red line guys have been really strong seven diogo have done an, an amazing job being really consistent but if i could finish out in third i'd be really happy with that well best of luck 14 laps lie ahead Go off and uh, end your season on a high. Thanks, Arjuna. Jordan Caruso joins us. We'll make our way over, though, to Diogo Pinto, who was fighting down just at the tail end of the top 10, able to grab eighth, the inverted pole position where you're going to line up alongside your championship rival. Diogo, how do you head? How do you feel, rather, heading into this final race of the season? Yeah, I'm feeling, well, pleased with the season overall. Uh, seems like I'm missing just a little bit of pace around here. Coley wasn't great. Uh, well, not the sprint, the first race was okay, but uh, yeah, hopefully I can finally get the win. I think I've had five second places this year, so I'm looking for a win now. You, you and I had had a brief discussion just before today's race, and you said that, you know, looking at the points, you're being realistic. It wasn't really much you could do to try and win the championship. Uh, how do you now head into this final race? Is it all just about winning to close the season off? Yeah, that's the main goal. Um... Obviously, anything can happen. If I'm in a position where I can, like I, like I said, do something, I will try. But the goal is just to have a clean final race to write off the season well. Well, best of luck for the race that lies ahead. And we'll make our way from Diogo Pinto to the driver that will line up alongside him on the front row. Sebastian Joe gets himself uh, ready to chat with us once again. Seb, I know you're getting ready to go. How are you feeling right now? Outside of the front row, ready 
to try and win another championship. Yeah, uh, race one went to plan, just kind of stayed out of harm's way. Uh, I'll just try and do the same again. Uh, I lost the place at start, wasn't really fussed. Uh, the only thing was that we ideally would have got Cooper into P8 for the reverse grid, but we yeah, just didn't quite have the pace to make any moves up uh, forwards. So um, yeah, just played it safe. Uh, and hopefully I'll play it safe again in this race. Well, I, uh, we were talking a little about Cooper and how that was going to influence it. Glad to hear we weren't totally off the reservation. We'll let you go and get ready to go. Go off and race for a championship. Thank you. Paul, he does seem like he's excited, a little, little bit stressed as well, but that's what happens. You're at this level. You're fighting for a championship. You're fighting for your share of 200 plus thousand dollars. It doesn't help when you get uh, a commentator asking a load of questions as well. So uh, uh, that certainly does. But you can see that intensity, that pressure. Uh, I think he, he's doing the right job, though. It's a bit of a champion's drive uh, of just being sort of calm and collected about things as much as possible. There's the live championship standings as things stand 40 points separate sebastian job and diogo pinto and i know right now that arjuna will be doing some uh, commentator math to try and uh, work out where sebastian job needs to finish if pinto wins this uh, this final race of the day but 40 points is the gap between the front two here in the standings um but we are not done with the action just yet because we've got a reverse grid race coming to you here. And it is Diogo Pinto and Sebastian Job on the front row of the grid with Alessandro Bico and Johan Half row number two. Row three for Dino Lombardi and Alejandro Sanchez. Lullum and Caruso then in row number four with Webster and Maciejewski. Campbell and McEwen will carry on their battle from race one. And then ahead of Julian Sun and Oscar Line. Uh, Gustavo Ariel, Luca Kita, Josh Thompson, and Sam Keiter. Parker White, Lassie Back, Simone Maria Marcena, Matti Sipola, Kevin Nielsen, and Ke Michael Gianni rounds out for number 12. Row 13 for Marina Sarika and Salva Talons. And Ty Stuckbeck and Bryn Collins, who did not finish the race in first race. Well, they start at the back of the field. We've got about a minute and 10 seconds here before this uh, race. Um, Arjuna, uh, is, I, I think the pressure's off Sebastian right now. I don't think there's much pressure at all. As no. we were saying in that first main race, all he's got to do is finish 16th or higher, and the championship will be his. He starts on the outside of the front row. He told us he wasn't fussed about losing a spot to Johan Hart on the start of the main race that we've already seen. I think a similar sort of mindset is what he's going to be thinking about right now as he sits on the outside of the front row, watches the lights, waits for them to build, and pull 14 laps away from becoming a multi-time champion here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. But he'll want to uh, he'll want to finish off with a race win though, because that would mean four main race wins for Sebastian this season. Um, could you see him sort of if he sits behind Pinto all the race, go for it on that last lap? No, uh, no, I don't think so. He won't <laughs> risk a championship. He's too smart now. The Sebi of a couple of years ago, maybe, but not this Sebi. Well, the stage is set then. Your two championship rivals on the front row of the grid. You can see their green wings and banners on their windscreen. They know what their job is here today. 40 points separate them coming into this one. For the final time this season, the engines revs rise and we are underway for the main race at Monza. Heading down towards the Retafilia for the first time. Great launch from Diogo Pinto on pole position. And already Alejandro Bico is trying to make some moves here. The Italian trying to get a good result here at his home track. But Job, he's hands on to that second place just for the time being. Pinto's pulling away through all of this action right now because Job has got Bico there. Sanchez, he's going to uh, want to try and get a race win for himself as well. It was on the exit of turn one that Job just had to be careful because he was alongside with Biko. And again, he's not fast. He'll slot into line, allow the Williams Esports 77 to grab second spot behind. That's Caruso. Victory in the first main race and dropping to the back. Contact with one of the Stormforce racing cars. And that car surely too much damage to continue. Oh, 
if things couldn't get from bad to worse. Caruso damage to the front. I think it's just a front bumper though, so he's gonna be able to carry on. No mechanical meatball warning flag for him as we go plunging downhill towards the Ascari chicane. And 1.2 seconds is the race lead right now. It's about 1.3 around here that you've got to look out for in terms of slipstream. And Pinto could be on for a winner here. And I feel as though Joe's not going to mind. Joe will sit and potentially wait until turn one. Yep, you can see lifts off the throttle, releases that pressure. Remember, 14 laps of racing. We've talked about incident points. We've talked about tire wear. So many factors that are going to lead these drivers to be a little bit more tentative and cautious in the early stages. And maybe you'll see some helping hands as well. I'm not saying Biko and Joe are going to work together, but we may see the bump draft helping them close to your race lead. Oh, this is just like watching one of our uh, uh, E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series broadcasts uh, uh, with the bump draft. There goes Sanchez to the inside of Job. My goodness, that was a late move from Sanchez. Job has to get out of it. That allows Biko to pull away in front of Job. He's got a big target on his car, it seems. And uh, that car seems to be a bit magnetic towards some big moves. It was a bit dangerous in some ways, and that's what Job's got to worry about, those lunges, oh. because if there's contact behind, it might just pile drive into him. That was Lombardi and Webster that almost came together. Not quite sure how they were able to get off one another, release the brakes, bring the car back under control, but that's the level of driver that we have here, and they're able to get through all of that situation safely. And Cooper Webster holds on to seven. You heard Sebastian Joe did say, though, he would have liked to have his teammate at the front to give him a bit more support. Another driver you wouldn't have to worry making big sense like Alejandro Sanchez. Yeah, he could have almost been a little bit of a rear gunner, couldn't he, uh, to Sebastian? Just that, that little bit of help from a compatriot in the uh, Oracle Red Bull sim racing team as they come through the Ascari chicane again. Lap number two. Plenty of time ahead of these drivers. There's no rush. Uh, although with the way that Sanchez made that move, you would imagine that uh, it was the last lap of the uh, of the championship. Through the go then, through Curva Alboreto once again onto the power, carry the speed and this whole field. Well, it's just all packed tightly packed together, apart from Jordan Caruso, who is on his horn at the back. Bryn Collins didn't take the race start, by the way, so uh, that's the end of his season this season. And onto the brakes, Luke McEwen, a little bit further down, 10th place. Has got Zach Campbell ahead still, as uh, more battling further down your field. And uh, Sonnen, Julian Sonnen, moving forward ahead of uh, Jakub Maciejewski. All squabbling, as you see around the outside, long way are being navigated through for Josh Thompson as his red line entry gets the door slam shut on him. Maciejewski's having none of that. Watch Ascari Rene, the fin, the flying fin, try and cut back underneath. A great stuff in the mid pack, costing them some time though, potentially oh. will allow those in oh. front to run away and just look at them all strumble over one another in the background. This all outside of the top 20, but it's all behind Lasse back. Well, it was the two Italians of Simone Emilia Marceno and Marina Sarica uh, duking it out at the Della Roggia, and uh, they end up uh, losing uh, out, and Marceno has actually got a slowdown penalty here. Matti Sipola, by the way, has got a black flag, so he's going to have to come down onto pit road to serve a drive-through penalty. So uh, that could be something like a jump start. It could be not serving a slowdown penalty in time. A um, number of reasons that could be given here in this race. But look at that. All those Porsches, 27 Porsches on your screen, heading down the back straight here at Monza. <laughs> the damaged, battered and bruised Altus Esports car of Jordan Caruso trying to work his way through. Quick message as well, and uh, wish him all the best in his future. Simon Feigl, the uh, team boss, of Altus Esports. He's decided to, uh, after today, uh, he's going to step aside and uh, focus his uh, time a bit more on his family and other um, interests. And I think it's fair to say that he certainly had a really good time as a team boss, both of the Evolution Racing Team and Altus Esports.
And indeed, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future. Change at the front, though, because here is some activity. Not sure exactly why Diogo Pinto has suddenly dropped into the clutches of Alessandro Pico. They swapped into turn one. They swapped back into the second chicane. And with Job sitting behind as well, I feel tension starting to rise. You know, Paul, I was saying slightly earlier, I felt like this would be a relatively a calm race. I don't think Joe or Pinto would be too stressed. Suddenly, because of the drivers around them that are so keen to end the season on a high, intensity starting to build. I think tension for their spot as their engineer is going to rise as well. Biko does have um, race win to his name. So uh, he'll want another one uh, to his name in this one. Alejandro Sanchez has been the only other driver outside of an Oracle Red Bull sim racing car that has won a main race this season. So he'll want to get another one and be a multiple time main race winner here this season. There is Sebastian Job, your bottom right. And uh, well, you've got to keep your nose clean and just keep out of trouble uh, if you're Sebastian. But that's easier said than done with some of those drivers. I mean, Sanchez can be really aggressive and opportunistic. Johan Half behind him can be really aggressive and opportunistic when you give him the opportunity. So uh, he's got to be uh, wary of those two behind. Yes, I'm a bit worried as well. At three wide into turn one, that was never really going to end well, and they back out of it. Some of those drivers taking that wide arc on the entry that sees them run on that pit exit. Now, Biko got a poor exit. This is where Joe will try and take advantage. Pinto might even feed some draft because he might feel more comfortable having Joe behind him than the hungry, feisty Alessandro Biko. Long way around through Corpo Grande, though, not going to work out. Joe runs out of steam. Oh, it's side by side, and yet just backing out of that one. Johan Harp and Dino Lombardi, both with a black flag. So, both of those drivers, Harp is in fifth, Lombardi is in sixth. Those two have got to take a trip down pit road for a drive-through penalty. We're going to see some big changes here in the top ten of this field. Now... My question is, is it because they're going a bit too aggressive on that pit exit line that they're taking and it's actually giving them an unsafe pit exit penalty? Well, we'll try and get word from the team. I've got uh, Ewan O'Leary on site actually at the Apex Racing Team Centre in Corby documenting some of the behind the scenes stuff. I can only imagine some of the, the insight that he may be seeing right now. but. That's high drama, and it's also going to potentially allow a little bit of a gap, a separation to start to open up. I'm wondering, as we near half race distance, though, where some of those drivers are now starting to sit with the incident points. Because Paul has definitely been a little bit more argy bargy today, as half looks quite frustrated. He's coming down to pit lane. Lombardi's decided to stay out for another lap. Oh, he is really not happy, and uh, you don't need to be a lip reader to be able to tell what he thinks of that. As uh, we carry on then towards the front, Pinto and Biko, they're duking it out. We've got to uh, race for sixth place as well, because Lombardi, well, he's got to serve a penalty, don't forget. Cooper Webster will be, well, he's in net fifth place right now. Sanchez is getting a bit excited up at the front of the field as well. He's actually got ahead of Sebastian Job in all of this, but they've got a big gap now. Job actually can be, as long as the drivers in front of him don't start fighting, he can be quite happy sitting there. I don't know if Johan Hart is going to appreciate me saying this, but uh, the track bounds are defined by the white lines. If you stick within them, you won't have problems. Don't really want to drill into that anymore. I know Johan's not happy. He looks very frustrated. And again, he's had what is probably his most consistent season across the board. Only once or twice has he dropped outside of the top 10. And we've seen him up the front consistently. And I think that's, Paul, why he's so frustrated. Shortest best season ever. He was able to get a pretty good run. Final race, it all comes unstuck. Beaker was making a look to the side of Pinto as they went underneath the banking there. And my goodness, that was uh, almost close to a, uh, a bit of a, uh, a quarter panel there. As they go down the back straight once again, and Sanchez, he's looking really alive in all of this. He's looking feisty. The, uh, the Spaniard, he's wanting to get a race win out of this one for that Stormforce racing team. And I think, you know, given that he carved his way 
already from six on the initial start. We saw some of the aggressive lunges that he was willing to make. He's definitely going to force the issue here, and you can't be comfortable if you're Pinto. If, in my mind, let these two go. Don't get involved. Sanchez wanted to try and take it three wide with Pico challenging for the race lead. Watch them off the corner here. Pinto on the in inside is going to box Pico out. Had to be careful of contact. Sanchez through. Joe tries to challenge as well. I mean, 3D chess being played right now, and we're not even halfway through officially. This is absolutely sensational stuff. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you've got a great snack and the beverage of your choice because this is brilliant entertainment. Lombardi now moves ahead of Sebastian Job, and uh, that means that Job now is just 24 points clear of Diogo Pinto. As you said, Arjun, it was, what, 16th, isn't it, that Job has to uh, finish really to be able to secure it as i can see the furious maths going on again uh, from arjuna but it, it really is job can't afford to be too kind because he gets out of his normal driving style and once you get out of your normal driving style you head off going backwards but what will help him is that driver behind him cooper webster um, uh, Matt's pretty simple, by the way. Again, all Seb's got to do is finish 16th. No change there. But what I'm, I'm laughing at a little bit is I'm getting reports from my reporter on the scene, Ewan O'Leary, who's saying that Johan is saying some words that are definitely not broadcastable right now. But he's still driving around at the back trying to, you know, minimize the damage and hope that others come into trouble. He is still fighting for championship points at the end of the day to try and get back into this top five and the prize money that comes with it. I've got to say, Paul, we didn't know what this double main race format was going to bring us. We know what Monza's going to bring us. Three wide into the opening corner. Pinto's got to be smart on the outside here. Oh, you, you, Pinto, he has to do just win. Oh, and again, he boxes out Sanchez. Here comes Job then, trying to take advantage on Sanchez here, as uh, Biko now, looking to make the move on Diogo Pinto at the front. Pinto needs to win. It's, it's very simple. He just needs to win and get the best points possible to finish off this season. But uh, these drivers, uh, Biko, Sanchez, uh, they are loitering with intent. They want a race win themselves. Confirmation has come through, by the way, from the Apex Racing team. It wasn't about pit entry, so they're apparently okay running that line. It was incident point. Multiple bits of contact between Dino Lombardi, Johan Haar, and I think that's where the frustration has built from. I've got to then go back to what we were saying right as Johan came down to pit lane, Paul. Where does everyone else sit on the incident point buffer? How much risk can they take, not just with track limits, but with other cars as well? Latte back has a mechanical meatball warning flag. He is out of this race. He's turned the car back to pit lane. He is done for today. Salva Talons for Stormforce Racing has a black flag. He's going to have to serve a drive through penalty. This final race, it's all going to be about who keeps the noses clean, if nothing else, here in this one. Uh, Gustavo Ariel, I want to give a quick mention to him, the young Brazilian up eight places now is up into seventh place in this race and you know why paul uh, he had to fight his way from the very back because his computer didn't want to turn on when he came to sit down to get ready for the race he didn't get a chance to set a lap time in qualifying and what a recovery drive it's been from a driver that had to win the last race of 2023 to lock himself in and here we go for the lead once more but pinto will hold on big send from sanchez uh, and Job does the right thing there, backs out of it. Like I say, having that comfort blanket of Cooper Webster behind you is really going to uh, help in this matter uh, for Sebastian Job in terms of the, uh, the championship and securing that. Pinto from Biko is your lead. Sanchez now in third ahead of Job. Webster and Lohan, fifth and sixth place. Gustavo Ariel, you see in the bottom left hand corner of your screen there, in that bottom left box, he's in seventh place right now, behind Lullum, ahead of Zach Campbell. Luke McEwen, ninth ahead of Julian Sonnen in tenth place. Jordan Caruso, by the way, with no front bumper at all, is in 17th. Clearly, Porsche builds their GT3 cars to be very, very resilient, and it uh, gives me optimism that if I ever get into a minor fender bender with my car, it will it will hold to the test of time. But 
I, I, at the front, I'm just looking at the face of Pinto and Joe. We've been going back and forth between the two of them. Neither of them showing any nerves right now. They've been able to survive for this long. I think they also trust now to some degree that the drivers around them, even if they're going to make some desperate moves, Paul, know that they're fighting championship drivers and are giving them that couple of extra inches that maybe they wouldn't traditionally give. As they go through the Parabolica once again, race for 12th place, it's Josh Thompson and Oscar Irine, uh, two drivers who uh, know each other well from this uh, series and from other series. The BS Plus competition driver of Irine and the team Redline driver of Josh Thompson. Battle for the lead continuing once again. Beaker going for it. Now we've seen Pintos just again boxed out. Beaker, there goes Sanchez. Every time that, um, that Pinto is under pressure, he forces them into that move for the inside of turn one, I meaning they've got the outside for turn two. I just remember going back and watching through last year's finale in preparation for this week. And one thing that I do remember seeing last year was a lot more side-by-side -side off of the exit of turn number one. I don't necessarily know why, but what we are seeing is drivers a little bit more aggressive in forcing drivers into the gravel and being on the outside, a bit of a death sentence in a lot of ways. Swap rounds happen, by the way. Joe's dropped at, uh, back behind his Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing teammate Cooper Webster doesn't really again change the championship complexion too much. What it does do though is give Cooper Webster a couple more points in his fight to not just maybe jump in front of Jordan Caruso, jump in front of Johan Harth as well. This all in the fight for fourth in the championship. Yeah, this is uh, intriguing how this is all panning out. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, in, in this uh, race it's not just about the championship at the front it's the top five as well there where the big money prizes are earned and through the parabolica once again they go it's going to be four laps to go at the line it's still pinto from sanchez from beaker now sanchez got a really good run through the parabolica there. They're gonna go side by side down into the retophilia and Pinto squeezing a little bit because here comes Beaker in all of this. Onto the brakes they go again. Pinto's gonna hit the brakes a little bit hard, a little bit later. And again, same move, same result as Sanchez almost tries to block Job. Job's losing places here. He's down to seventh now behind Lullum and Ariel. And again, I go back to incident points. Job's looking stressed now. He's definitely feeling it a little bit. Get out of this situation. That's kind of what I would be saying on the radio. Knowing that 16th all you need, maybe you can afford to drop back a little bit more. Though having said that, Paul, could you really take that gamble? That's a big block just in front of them by the Brazilian Gustavo Ariel. It's just really putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. And look at both of our championship contenders. Uh, I want to tell you, by the way, the gap between Sebastian Job and 16th place, which is Parker White, is just three seconds. So, one little mistake, if he gets just a little knock that pushes him into the gravel trap somewhere, say at the Lesmos or at the exit of the Retophilia, then he could be well down back in those uh, positions and fighting for his life in the championship. Just 18 points now separating as things stand between him and Diogo Pinto. Both drivers wanting to join Josh Rogers as a two-time champion of this championship. Another one driver in history has done that. We're going to see a second driver do it here today. The question is, Arjuna, is it going to come down to a silly mistake or, a, or an incident that's going to cost it for one of these drivers? Again, all Sebastian needs is one point at the end of the day, and so that's where he'll be thinking as we get ready to head down into these final couple of moments, final chances to make moves happen as well. And now that Job has gone from the front to the mid-pack, he's getting swarmed by drivers who maybe have been in fights with him in the past and don't want to be so nice. Bigo gets bullied. Cooper Webbs has come from nowhere. Just missed out on the inverted pole for the main race, uh, the second of our main races. Now back towards the front, looking to challenge Pinto for the race lead into the second chicane. Job's losing more and more time, by the way. Just keep an eye on the left side and the green bar that denotes the number 22. It's 
Portugal versus Australia at the front of the field. Cooper Webster, of course, getting the main race win at Le Mans. That, of course, was a, a fantastic win for him, his first ever win in the championship. He also took the main race win last time out at Imola as well. Can he make it three wins in the season for main race as well? He's certainly going to give it a good go at the front. Pinto, in the meantime, you wouldn't believe that he's uh, stressed right now. It's just absolute focus on his face. And again, it goes back to what he was kind of coming into this race with right set your expectations appropriately it was a significant delta between the two of them he recognized that he wasn't necessarily going to close 38 points all he wanted to do was solidify seconds stay out of trouble help the rest of his teammates where he can and then see where the chips would fall two laps to go this time by seb's got some margin now behind him McEwen, Campbell and Sonnen, almost a second splitting those three cars. I think he'll be feeling pretty happy as we head on to the second penultimate lap of the season. As they go down the straight once again. Two laps remain in the championship and crucially for Pinto, he's got Gustavo Ariel, his teammate, in fourth place. In third place is Chris Lullum who races out of the Verstappen.com racing team which is part of uh, the team red line overall structure so uh, that's another help from uh, from him to give him a little bit of protection and also cooper webster the oracle red bull sim racing team uh, they are in very good company and very good cahoots with team red line so you're not going to see an absolutely desperate move from those three drivers compared to beaker and sanchez desperation though in terms of points i think is building through all the teams and drivers i mentioned of course remember caruso half uh webster all fighting for fourth and points this is a similar situation to what we kind of saw last year when zach campbell and sebastian Job were fighting for second in the championship we're talking thousands of dollars for each of those positions as well and that's why as much as the championship might be locked up the rest of the drivers aren't going to worry so much about that I feel as though, Paul, we have also, as much as the second race has stayed compressed compared to the first main race that we have, it's not necessarily building and intensifying in the same way. I feel like this final lap might not be as chaotic as some may think. Yeah, as we go through the Parabolica to start the final lap of the 2024 season, it's Diogo Pinto who leads across the line with Cooper Webster, Chris Lullum, Gustavo Ariel, ahead of Alessandro Bico, Alejandro Sanchez, Sebastian Job in seventh place. Right now, as things stand, he is going to be champion. There is no penalties. There's no black flags outstanding for any driver on track right now. So we've not got to worry about instant points as things stand at the moment as they go through the Curva Grande once again and uh, Pinto's just gained a little bit of a gap over Webster at the front of the field as Job we're focused on him right now he sat behind Sanchez ahead of Luke McKeown oh Sanchez big mistake yeah this is really where I was saying for Job he's going to start feeling more uncomfortable McEwen will look at the inside he's got to worry about Zach Campbell going around the long way these are all drivers remember fighting for thousands of dollars not just for the championship but down the order as well out of the second Lesmo the rise to Ascari you got to be careful about how aggressive you want to make you be in making a move because that compromises you on this final lap on the run towards the final corner what a season it's been Paul what a final race we've had too this has been absolutely sensational and having two main racers has really given us a wonderful thrill ride of a show. Pinto, well, he started on pole position. He's not led every lap of this race, but he'll be hoping for a race win here to finish off his season through the Curva Alboreto for the final time. Cooper Webster is going to look to the inside though as they reach the start and finish line. It's absolutely neck and neck and across the line it is going to be Pinto who takes the win here in the final race of the season but across the line in seventh place is your 2024 
Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup champion, Sebastian Job. And he takes a sigh of relief. It's a lot of hard work to get here, and not many get to experience the joy of victory. He'll share it with his friends, he'll share it with his family. Sebastian Job, the best in the world. They'll be partying in East Grinstead tonight. I can tell you that that will be uh, one heck of a celebration. It's been a long time. 2020 was the last time he won the championship for Sebastian Job. And once again, he is the best in the world here. Well, let's take you to our Buzz Post Race show here and take you through your unofficial race results here for the final round of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup 2024. Just 17 thousandths of a second covered Diogo Pinto and Cooper Webster at the line. It was Pinto's first win of the main races this season. Chris Lullum finishes in third place ahead of Gustavo Ariel. Alessandro Bico and Alejandro Sanchez fifth and sixth. The head of your champion, Sebastian Job in seventh place. Luke McEwen beats out Josh Thompson, who was able to work his way up eight places into ninth, ahead of Jakub Maciejewski with his best result of the season. Oscar Linde then in 11th, ahead of Luca Kita, with Zach Campbell, Julian Sonnen, Jordan Caruso, your reigning champion, finishes 15th in the end. Kevin Nielsen and Matthias stuck back together with uh, Sam Keiter, Parker White and Michael Janney. And it's Marina Sarika, Simone Maria Marcello, Dino Lombardi, Johan Haaf, Salva Talens is the last driver to finish in the points. Matti Sipola is uh, also just behind him and Lassie Back did not finish the race. So that is the standings and uh, well, we will get to chat to a couple of our drivers in just a few moments time. And well, we're gonna bring in uh, one driver in particular who's had a tremendous season, Arjuna. Um, let's uh, hopefully speak to your champion of Sebastian Job in, in a moment. Um, so uh, we'll see now, yes, there goes the donuts, Arjuna, for your champion. Some well-earned celebration moments for him as well. Again, Paul, we can only talk about the effort that these drivers put in. Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing do a decent job of letting us in behind the scenes to see that effort as well. But uh, these are the moments that you think about, you dream, you live for. And Sebastian Job is now a two-time champion in the Porsche Tag Core Esports Super Cup. Seb, how does it feel to hear that? Uh. What a relief. What a relief. I I cannot tell you how stressful that was. Um, you know, I just drop in positions every single lap. You, it's not like the pace was bad. I just could not take any risks. It, it would look like they're all my teammates, if you can guess. Like, uh, with even with other people, like, you, you'd think I was just letting everyone by, and that, that was kind of the situation. As soon as anyone even showed their nose, I had to just jump out of the way. I couldn't, couldn't take any risks. Uh, and that's a horrible feeling, just dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, and, you know, you can't do anything about it, you can't take any risks. Um, but yeah, it's a massive relief. Uh, four years since I won it the first time and a couple of P2s, which were very frustrating. Uh, a lot of hard work. Um, so yeah, it was uh, a massive, massive, massive relief. Uh, and I think it's nice to see all the hard work paying off again uh, because I, I think in 2020 I didn't work as hard as the years I came second uh, you know I worked hard but those years I came second I was grinding away for so many hours and it didn't quite come together so now to finally get that second one is uh, just a huge relief Let's talk about your season as a whole never really struggling too hard top tens across the board four wins in a row there are seasons uh that are worthy of championships and then there are seasons like this where you just don't put a foot wrong what do you attest to the change in the last four years that have seen you rise to this level and we talked about it a little bit on the broadcast you make decisions now that you wouldn't have made four years ago uh you know i've heard you guys say that a few times but i, I actually disagree controversially um i think when you get almost maximum points in the first two rounds, you don't have to take risks. Uh, in 
in the previous years, I was the same driver I am now, but I had awful starts this season. And I put that down to the team around me this year. Uh, we've had a big change up um, and a massive help from uh, our chief engineer, Andre Kunkman. Uh, he's transformed everything for me in terms of this year with the practice and the team. And we, we were just on it from day one instantly. Like we were the, we were the pace setters. Uh, and when you're in that situation and when you have that start to the season, you don't need to take those risks. And that's kind of uh, what happened here. You know, my qualifying lap was not good because I didn't have to take the risks. Whereas in those first three rounds, when I didn't, you know, I still had the whole season ahead. I was going for it and the pace was much better. But uh, as soon as that, that uh, gap was built, I could take it easier. And that's what happened uh, in 2020 when I won it. It's what happens pretty much every year. As soon as someone has a good start, they're always the favorite for the year. Um, so I don't think I drove too differently. Uh, I was just in a very fortunate position where I didn't need to take those risks. Uh, no, I mean, no real mentality shift. Don't think you're wrong there. I think there's a lot of truth said. Congratulations, Seb, two-time champion. Go off and enjoy this and wish you the best of luck for the rest of whatever you do in 2024. Cheers, guys. I'll see you uh, in a bit. Big smile on his face. We'll make our way on over to Diogo Pinto, who did, of course, finish the season out with a victory. But Diogo second, I think you knew that coming into this final round, it was realistically all you could really hope for. But talk to us about your feelings right now with the season complete and coming just short of the championship. Yeah, I think it was my best season so far in this series. And yeah, I'm happy with P2. I knew going into the last round is going to be very difficult. Uh, yeah, maybe left a bit in quality in the first race, but you never know what would have happened. So, yeah, I'm happy with the win. I, I really wanted the win because all season I've been finishing second place. So, yeah, I think uh, it's nice to finish off with the win. I think everyone did really well in the team as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, technically, isn't that your first main race victory as well? So, you were able to kind of check that mark off. Let, let's talk about the fact that I've had one before. Ah, okay. You, you, you correct me there. You've had a, a pretty good run, like you say. Seb just had a great season, but it was a short season. How did that kind of change your mentality at the start? And how do you reflect on it after just seven rounds in the season? Yeah, I mean, I just took it really race by race. Uh, I'd say Imola already was thinking about the championship and to secure the P2. To get the one two for the team, I think, is quite important. And yeah, I mean, realistically, Debbie was, uh, was the best driver and I'm his teammate. I seen practices just super, super fast and he performed very well under pressure. So in a way, I'm happy I finished this close to him because I think even though I lacked a little bit of pace, I was performing always quite well during the races. Not as well as I want to in the last two rounds. I don't feel like I had the pace compared to other rounds, but still, I mean, I'm happy to finish off with the win. And before we let you go, one final thought from you in Portuguese, just for all of the fans that have been watching and waiting to hear it. Agradecer ao apoio durante a temporada inteira. É, fiz o melhor que pude, não deu para o campeonato, mas acho que o segundo lugar também não posso estar insatisfeito. Obrigado. Uh, enjoy the rest of your off-season and we'll see you next time here on the yeah. iRacing Esports Network. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. There we go. Always good to hear from uh, your race winner and also a champion. There is your final championship standing. Sebastian Gerb, 18 points clear ahead of Diogo Pinto in second place in the end. And the dominance that they had over the field, look at that third place, Alejandro Sanchez, by a single point over Jordan Caruso. It was a single point ahead of Cooper Webster, who managed to get himself into fifth place in the end. Luke McEwen in sixth ahead of Johan Half, Alessandra Biko, Chris Lullen, and Gustavo Ariel rounds out the top 10 of your championship. Um, Arjuna, uh, thoughts on the, on today, thoughts on the season as well? I mean, it's been wild. We always knew with just seven rounds, it was going to be a special edition of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. But I think today really embodied what all that was about, right? Seb and Diogo, the class of the field, I think, crossed the board. Uh, the, the drama that we had behind, I mean, Johan Hart's going to, I think, be rightfully quite angry with the fact that if he doesn't feel like he racks up those incident points through any fault of his own, he's lost a couple of thousand dollars in the championship due to some other driver's actions. But it's all as we wrap up another season. We look forward to what's left to come here in 2024.
I tell you what, I absolutely love the mid-season tournament. I think the, just the way it mixed things up a bit really was fun. And the two main races today, I think, just sealed off the championship very well. So uh, don't forget, if you do want information and to look at those final championship standings, check on iRacing.com forward slash pesk. Uh, if you've watched this and wanted to uh, wonder about uh, joining iRacing, iRacing.com for further information and all new memberships uh, with money off as well. Well, that is all that we have got for you here in 2024. Thank you to everybody, all the drivers, all the administrators behind the scenes from Porsche, from the sponsors as well at Tag Heuer, uh, the production team behind the scenes here, bringing you all of the action. And myself, Paul Smith, and Arjuna Kankapati, will say to you goodbye for now, but what a season it was.